Sorry. City YouTube channel. We roll call. Ramza. Here. Perry. Here. Needing. Here. Waitman. Here. Skatulski is absent. Excused. Donnelly. Here. Mayor Gardner. Here. And our attorney Phil Goldsmith is here also. Okay. <laughs> All right. Moving on to the minutes, I have one minor change I want to make. That I did vote yes on the refund of the sewer portion of the bill, and it uh, it says no that that was the only no vote. But I actually went back and reviewed the video, and I, I was pretty sure I said yes on it, and it's correct. So if we could change that to my vote to a yes on that one. Um, any other changes? Anybody knows of? Do I have a? Motion to approve the consent agenda items A through C. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Ooh, tonight's consent agenda items A through C as prevented in the way of the reading. Support. We have motion. We have support, and I assume for clarification, you mean with minor correction. Under minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Along with the minor correction of an actual yes vote from the mayor for the refund portion of oh I'm sorry yeah yeah, yeah you're right that's you're, correct you're on right. the refund portion of the sewer okay charge and the support is good with that yes thank you very much any other discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed hearing none motion carried Mine was a yes. uh, bills of warrants item D do I have a motion yeah. I'll make a motion to approve <clears throat> bills of warrant number 14175 paid in the amount of $594.99. Bills of warrant number 14176 unpaid in the amount of $29,218.33. And the visa payment in the amount of $1,297.59. Support. We have a motion. We have support. Any discussion? I just have a vague question. Sure. What is a dollar amount that you guys have to get permission to use the Visa card, or is it just use it if we need it? There are standard items that you know, council approved in the budget, and the budget discretion at, you know, it's at the discretion of the department heads. If there's something extra on there or something they, then we discuss it and probably bring it to council or whatever. But Before it's usually there's there's not anything I know of that says an exact amount. But it, when they draw up their budgets, they put normal expenses and things in there that we run into. Okay. Just Any, yeah. Good question. Good question. Any other questions? We'll go to a roll call vote. Ramza. Yes. Perry. Yes. Needing. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Thank you very much. Motion uh, Motion carried. Uh, presentation, we actually do for the fire department. I'm going to move it down to the fire department report. Uh, moving on to the mayor's report, I deliberately brought it down to one item here. Actually, I'll, there's two items, but uh, the total eclipse. It looks like it's going to be partly cloudy that day. We know that a lot of people are going to be here. I can't say enough, don't come here because that makes me come here all the more. 
we're still getting more and more phone calls every day. I just <coughs> got in the office and Jolene says, call this person, they're coming down, Channel 4 News. Uh, I called, called the reporter, they said, we're at exit seven, we're coming down, we wanna to talk to you and do an interview at the, at the lighthouse. So we're gonna be in the news again the day before. And this is what's going on. It's gonna be a crowd. We're, there's n invited or not, we're gonna have a lot of people here on that day. The chief will cover on his report, the preparations we're doing there, and he's done a, a lot of work and all the agencies we've been in contact with to deal with this. Uh, looking at other articles, you may have seen the one I posted on Facebook that was relaying experiences people had in the 2017 eclipse where there were traffic jams. I'm saying five hours long here in my report. I believe it's actually longer than that. And people, depending on where they were, ran out of food, gas stations ran out of gas, and cell phone service was non-existent because so many people wanted to live stream this spectacular experience that nobody could get through on cell phones. That's the kind of thing we should prepare for. I won't say we're going to have that, but it's very possible. <clears throat> the pricing for parking is on the special event rate, which is usually you know same as weekends and holidays. We, we're gonna max out on our parking spaces. We've talked to businesses. The DDA has been very proactive in contacting people, anybody with parking spaces, any businesses with parking spaces saying, hey, can look out, they're coming. And we don't care what you charge. If residents wanna charge, it's up to them. But we can expect a lot of people here and parking is going to be a problem. I think we can handle more people than we can cars for parking. I think the biggest problem is gonna be the parking and that's just my speculation. Uh, we'll use whatever means necessary to keep the streets open. <clears throat> Lakewood, I think we need to post that with our regular Freedom Festival signs, which is easy enough to do the day before. I'm suggesting, or I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying we need uh, portable toilets and we can get them. I talk to spots and they can provide them at $100 per unit. And if they know by Friday before the eclipse, they can have them here by Monday morning when the eclipse happens. Uh, I'm recommending 10 units, a minimum of 10 units, just to have some in Memorial Park and maybe a couple down by the boat launch. I think it's important to uh, take responsibility for the health and safety of our residents because if people can't go and a lighthouse is booked up, they're gonna find a spot. And we don't want them in our parks and in your yards. I think I would rather spend $1,000, have the facilities ready. If they don't get used, then <coughs> we uh, spent $1,000 of our parking money. If it's not there, we're gonna have a, a literal mess on our hands. Uh, this really, the attention we're getting, everyone without question got here. Every reporter pulled up and said, I never knew this place was here. This is so nice. We're gonna be on the map for a long time. It's really opened people's eyes up. And again, one person told me, I knew you had a water tower here because that's what I see your name, but I never knew you had a beach and all this public parking area or this public area. That kind of uh, publicity, uh, even though we're not asking for it, we're getting it. The gas station and travel plaza actually in Erie opening up, that's gonna have a significant impact on the city, even though it's over in Erie Township. The re improvements in our uh, sur travel plaza on the on Luna Pier side and the new overpass, those all those things combined really fit into the economic development uh, goals that we set in our master plan and our economic uh, recovery plan. That's what it is. I think not preparing for this is not gonna make the people not come. Say it again, not preparing will not make them stay away. 
I think we need to prepare for it. Uh, if anybody has any objections, uh, speak now, but I think we have enough money in the parking revenue to pay for the, the Port of Johns. We're gonna recover that in one day and way more than that in, in parking fees on that day. So I'm really making, yes. Two things. One, so we are enforcing paid parking that day. Yes. What's going to happen to the people that park where they're not supposed to? Is that going to be addressed by the chief during his? <laughs> it can be. Yes. It's not written in my statement, but yeah, we can go over it. Yeah, yes. Please. Yes. Secondly, if that if it's a thousand dollars, do we have to add that as an agenda item for approval tonight? That was kind of a rhetorical we, question. Mm -hmm. We we can do that. I you know I think I think we I should. Think, yeah, we, we we can do that. I'm I'm prepared to do that. I think it's a, I think it's the right thing to do. But I also have a responsibility as the mayor and as a CEO to act on public safety, and I think it is a necessity that we we have to. I'm we sorry. Cannot. Don't take that negatively. No, no. Take that as an right. action item. Yes, we can we can do that. Okay. And and <laughs> if, if council was dead set against it, uh, I don't know what to do because I'm just saying it's to. it's something okay. we should officially vote right. on, especially when there's money involved, right? Okay, we All can right. do that. Yeah. Had nothing to do with any. Right, assumptions. Right. I, I just, I, it's really important to me that we do something. I did not want to go unprotected like that. Yes. I, I have a question. Um, I think we also need to take into consideration how many people are also going to flock to Erie Road, and that is technically part of Luna Pier. Um, and despite the terrible condition of the road, that is going to be packed as well. So if we are going to go to the extent to get Porta Johns, extra trash cans, we need to include that as well because we already have trash and excrement I, I, out there now. That. Okay. Probably ten in the city and maybe two down there. Okay. All right. We and we were thinking scoping it out, all the activity is gonna be down there. Right here, we're not even in the total path. Path of the total eclipse. So activities down there, we'll put some at the boat ramp, a couple at the boat ramp, and most of them in uh, Memorial Park. And really, I'll, I'll tell them if, if we get into trouble, we may have to call for a cleaning or whatever. I'll, I'll make those arrangements. And we'll do what we have to do to protect the public and residents. So that's okay. definitely something for police, fire, and EMS to consider if we're looking to cover anything down there. Yes. Yes, I. If we're gonna have issues with traffic jams, is that something that we can get Erie um, involved in, in case it's an issue of not being able to get back and forth between Erie Road and here? Um, I think so. You know what? I think we'll hold those questions for the police report. Right. And, okay. and 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 he, he's address. Uh, I know that I guess the chief is prepared to address many of those things. Uh, do we know how many Porta John do we have for the Fourth of July party? For the day it's more it's about 14 it's close to that many i mean the beat the the there's 10. there's was it, was 10. it 10. i cut it down okay so that's that's the answer i in the past we had 14 that is but it's right around there and, and they get full and they service them during the day too on the freedom festival so we have 10 for the whole day and then this could be potentially just a hour event, a couple hour event. Yes, but people are going to come and stake out their spot. Yeah, that's early. The, yeah, early they, they're not going to show try to show up last night, last minute, especially with you know predictions of traffic jams. And don't forget, school buses have to get through. I pleaded with the school district, and they did. they are decided to dis dismiss yeah. one uh, <laughs> ten, uh, two hours early. Mm -hmm. So they're. Yes. Mm -hmm which it's going to be pretty crazy uh, but that's up but to we them. should protect yeah. our school buses i'm sorry yeah. uh, that that's our number one thing that we need to right. worry about being protected right but yeah are, are, and, and also harold drive people speeding down harold drive we should yes. have a couple officers designated just for that road something that, that we could talk about yeah we're talking about that on the police report and we can't put everything at the lighthouse i mean 
there's I'm just that. saying those are places they're like Mark said we have to worry about Harold Drive we have to worry about Lakewood yeah I mean well, I live on Lakewood right. so I'm not real impressed with having all these people trying to find their way out well the beach is our main attraction in our pier being named Luna Pier and I just think that's where they're gonna go there's there's no gonna be no parking down in Lakewood and everything I don't know why they're gonna they're gonna go along the beach all the way down there but they're not gonna go be in the city streets or by the houses they're gonna be out by the lake looking they're gonna try uh, to go find parking down they, there. well they will yeah and, and we'll have it posted and we will be watching and, and the chief will cover all of that and I think um, deputy chief assistant chief Welton will have and our fire chief will have that uh, that's all I have in my report um, oh important thing we, we are going to post the actually the, the clerk position is posted we're going to change it to clerk not deputy clerk and then we will need to do some work on our employee manual to get those titles straightened out and we may have to go back there may be a resolution where I don't remember how we did that before we had we separated and we called our clerk deputy clerk so they could hire so we could get somebody who does not live in Luna Pier that was really all for naught because there's a thing called the residency act that's been in in place at a state level since 2000 now our charter says that the clerk has to be a resident but the state law overrides our charter is that correct correct so we really didn't know that at the time and switched those around and, and didn't really need to do that we I, I agree we should go back and cover that in the employee manual and uh, through any resolutions we have to go through to do that but we will post it as a clerk <laughs> position and it doesn't change the pay responsibilities anything like that yeah can I make a comment or a yeah. suggestion yes so moving forward with anything like this when you know information comes in later than normal uh, when first considerations were made for this right yeah um, the residency act came in later and decisions were made uh, based on a submission without that information and then you had the privilege of having that information made the changes based on that information and then gave it back to the committee I'd like to make a suggestion that when anything like that happens in the future that you are a committee and that when yeah. any new information comes in it spawns a meeting where you present yeah. that information you discuss the information you make recommendations based on it you get everyone to agree first well make sense it does I learned about it this last week understood and but revisions were made based on that information that you had and they didn't have that privilege until well, you gave it all back to them yeah I, I spawn a meeting all right it'll be the well, simplest thing I didn't have time to meet that day and I gave it to the information to them that day that's the day I learned about it keep in mind I'm the one who voted probably if we did a resolution because I remember we hired uh, Jolene before I'm, I'm the one that didn't know that the residency thing didn't matter and I didn't know until recently I started looking at it correct um, no one did so, yeah. so mayor yeah, that, it had nothing to do with Jolene the, Crystal was holding oh, the position right. as clerk okay. moved out of the city okay. and that's where it came it had nothing to do okay, with Jolene that, at all you're right that's that's helpful because then I have to look back farther it had to go before that and uh, that predates my term on council so that that's good that's a very good point I have, a, I have a question and since we have Phil here as well as part of the residency act we are still within right to limit um, hi, with hiring someone that lives within 20 miles though correct we can do that we have nothing in place right now we're allowed to by the state but we don't have anything in place right now okay yeah. and it doesn't have to be you can. it doesn't have to be 20 either right right, it, yes, right. that's correct it can be you know 20 it can't be less than 20 right and conversely it can be more okay and, and I didn't want I didn't want that to, it, it is what it is right now I didn't want to try to resolve all that before we post and start our search because we need to get searching and 
the chances of somebody that far away not. I mean. Well, there's always the chance that this that we could get an applic a qualified right. applicant further away, and this would need to be addressed before. Right. We make and you know, we would have to decide: is do we want to limit ourselves like that? Do we want to put? Well, on days somebody like somebody that's twenty one and is very very qualified and wanted to do the job, or do we want to tie our hands that way? Just something we can discuss. Um, but it's, it's we'll we'll work on that. There's, it's nothing we have to act on tonight, but we definitely need to fix some things that are wrong right now and fix them for the future, so we don't run into this again. But that's all I have. Any other questions? Uh, moving on to department reports, Chief Andre, you are you are listed before the fire department. After Chief, I may refer to uh, Assistant Chief Walton for some of these questions. I'm going to get good evening. Uh, my, my police report starts out. We have seven sworn officers uh, for the city of Lumpia at this time. Um, unfortunately. Um, Yesterday, today, I have an officer that is contemplating quitting, and he's discussing it with the powers that be in his family. So we may be down to seven by the time the eclipse comes, but we do have an officer or a retired officer doing a ride along right now, so we could be back up to seven by the time. So we're losing one, gaining one, hopefully. Um, I don't know if y'all, uh, Sergeant Price was a officer here for a sergeant here for uh, several years I think five years he's worked here um, recently did have some health issues um, and had been off the Luna Pier Police Department for months um, he did come back uh, this month uh, was able to work a couple days but then due to um, just his health condition and I don't want to say age but he's retired one job and his health and he was working basically Two full-time jobs between here and, and South Rockwood. He's going to give up uh, Luna Pier. He's actually given up Luna Pier. He's resigned, and he's just going to uh, work for South Rockwood. So I, I, I truly lost a, a big asset for me because he was my sergeant and a wealth of knowledge for everything, <laughs> um, budgeting and, and detective work and all that stuff. So I truly be missed. He will truly be missed by um, the city, I believe. Um, he. Uh, he wanted to thank everybody, all of you guys, because um, he knows you guys supported him and you guys support the police department. And uh, he didn't want to give it up, but he sort of had to just because of the uh, concerns he and his family had according to his health. Um, we do have some new leads on some officers, like I said, and we are continuing uh, recruiting. Um, dynamic, we're still receiving calls on noise and traffic problems there. Um, the, the solar eclipse, well, I'll, I'll clip, skip that part. I'll go down to the blight and come back to the solar eclipse. <laughs> um, so with blight, um, just springs here, and basically, I don't want to say we, we don't do stuff over the winter, because some of the stuff was done for blight over the winter, but in spring, people tend to get outside, look at their yard, oh, it may need cleaned up, and that's where I come in, give them a little hand, say, hey, you may need to clean this up. So that's what I've been doing. I've been talking to a lot of people. I'll continue to do this, uh, get their... Um, Yards in order, um, cleaned up, vehicles moved. Uh, if you go over the flight sheet, uh, just in the past couple of days, I've had a couple of boats moved, cars moved, a um, couple of areas that have been uh, problems for a while. Or not, I don't want to say a problem, but uh, just debris had been sitting there from construction and everything. The guy, I, I left a note, two days later it was clean. I was like, wow, <laughs> it doesn't usually happen like that, but that's what happened. Now, one of the problem areas that I did have on 5th Street, um, or six, I'm sorry, 4th Street, he's uh, working on it. He got rid of cars. Um, he licensed the car that he does have. Um, that he, that well, he wasn't driving it, but he's licensed it, so now he can drive it. Um, and he's complying, and he is cleaning up his yard. And that was probably the biggest issue I had. Um, just several several people are, are taking care of the problems that they're doing. A couple cars were moved on North 4th Street, um, 2nd Street. It's, it's, so it's, it's been a good uh, good month for, for blight. Now for the solar eclipse. Um, we're preparing and planning for the eclipse due to the many variables. This event has been a challenge. 
Uh, surrounding departments um, have been contacted and promised their support if needed. Um, we contacted the Sheriff's Department, Michigan State Police, Mineral Emergency Manager. I left um, Emergency Management. Um, I left out Erie. Um, I already talked to Chief uh, Ames. They have four guys working that day, and he says they're available whenever we need them as long as they're not handling their own issues because they are, they're not a city, but they're actually in the path too. So I'm sure they're going to be dealing with people parking and doing stuff. But he said, well, you know, they'll, they'll be available to us and just give them a call and they'll be happy to help out. Um, I have talked to the sheriff at, uh, about his drone, uh, bringing uh, their drone down here, um, just to keep an eye out. And I think that would help, uh, especially with Erie Road, because maybe I don't have to have someone down there all the time if I can have a drone go up and look at it. Um, I do have an officer that is drone certified. He worked for Taylor Police Department. He has a license to fly a drone. Um, so he he maybe bring his in. I haven't really talked to him yet about actually like saying, hey, do you want to do this? But I talked to him about doing it. And he, he seemed like he'd be willing to bring his drone in, be able to use that. He has a small one, not the big ones that the county has. He has a more personal one that he uses. Chief? Yes. I would expect plenty of drones here that day as and, well. And that's the other issue is, is with all the drones here. But, I, but the sky's up there, and I don't know how well it will see, but I'm, I'm expecting several drones. So I don't know how well you – did they avoid each other? <laughs> down the operator. Operator error? They have object avoidance, but when two of them are moving – it's not, not that help. fast. Well, the sheriff's is probably bigger, so he's like, win. But yeah, I think there'll be drones here too. But that was just one of the options we we considered. And I talked to sheriff uh, good enough, and he said um, I was supposed to talk to the captain in charge of the program. But he said you know, they'll help if we need. Uh, MSP, uh, they have four off four troops working that day. Um, he said they don't have any special assignments for that day. They'll be doing their routine um, patrolling and, and traffic and stuff but they will be able to respond. I said, well, come on down if they just want to you know, hang out and watch it and be in the area. And he said they will be in the area and they know about it. Um, Monroe Management is talking to um, Wayne County. They, everybody knows about it and they're dealing with their own stuff because they're having a 98% or 99% eclipse up there. So they're expecting issues there too, but they are aware if we have any serious issues, they will be available. So to Amanda's point, um, if you have future conversation with them, it's not just here, but down at Erie oh, yes. Road as well. That's, and, and, and I, that's my, me and the mayor have talked about this. Erie Road is probably my biggest, and I don't wanna, I, it's my biggest concern, is because the access and the limited access for the officers and your 100%, Erie, Erie Police Department would have better access than we do. Um, if something was to go on, so they th that I will I will contact them and say hey you know if we need you, and I'm sure Tim at Chief Ames is wonderful. He'll he'll say okay, and th they're always on Stearns and Suter anyway. So what's that too far away? <laughs> it might not be a bad idea to do something, put something across the opening of the um, drive out there. So we don't have the gate in place, and I know put nobody wants to up. put a chain back up because somebody will cut that's it. But idea. at this point, people are getting used to driving out there, and right. that's going to be even more of a problem with the Eclipse. Yeah. That's a good point. We'll, we'll put it in place. Okay. Yeah, that, I didn't think about that. That's good. The, the biggest worry I have is people double uh, parking on both sides of the road and really limiting the access down to the center of the road, especially for uh, fire equipment, emergency equipment. Going down there, I think a car would fit, but a, a truck or the, the rig, their, their pickup would probably fit. Well, I think we had an issue with mm -hmm. somebody drove down there and blocked, and they couldn't get emergency right. vehicles down there for a water rescue. So that's my biggest concern. I'm probably going to have someone assigned down there if, if we can. Um, and then everybody else, I like, I, I right now I have, you were, you were talking about assigning two officers to Harold. I don't have two officers to assign to Harold. I have, I have uh, five people coming in, uh, five officers, I'm sorry, four officers, fifth one's questionable still. I have three reserves coming in that day, so I have up to seven to eight people. Um, it would be nice, and I'm sure we'll, I'm, we're going to keep 
um, eye on it and you know do what we can do. The parking on Lakewood, the parking on that's going to be our biggest concern, much like it is on um, the Freedom Festival days and, and the, well, it's the same day garage sales. The Freedom Festival were the you know people are just going to find somewhere to park. Um, and I'm, and it's unfortunately, or fortunately, it's not. It's a three hour event, basically, two and a half hour event of this eclipse. So hopefully the people parking there are only doing it for a couple, parking badly, are only there for a short term. But we still need to handle that. And, and that's what our major concern is, just random parking, especially on the streets going to the lake. Because I think, like the mayor said, people are going to congregate at the lake for the eclipse because it'll look cooler because the water and but that's the what sun is going to be oh yeah over the I, expressway it's not going to be over the I lake i don't think people yeah. know that and there's they fewer won't. trees that way though. yeah they won't they'll, they'll just go because it's the lake oh so we'll watch it from the lake. This, the it's school's the opening their parking lots yeah. for people to use the school parking lots in area who is the Mason. school oh are they going to be awesome Hopefully that'll alleviate some of us and they'll get off on yes. the pier south and go that way. I mean, um, they did ask me to remind everybody that it is a smoke-free, drug-free, alcohol-free. Uh, it's very restricted of what your activities can be there and that applies all the time, 24-7. Yes, At Freedom Fest, uh, having the mounted police is, I think, a really good visual for them passing by. I don't, I'm just throwing that out the there. The issue with them is we, I'm, I'm sorry, not we, <laughs> the Freedom Festival gives them a donation to be here. Gotcha. Yes. And, and it's not I wasn't a, aware of that. And oh, it's yes. not a, yeah, we, we pay them a, between it's a donation. It's, it's, a, it's a donation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a donation of yeah, yeah. $600 to pay for their expenses. Yeah. And it's hard on a Monday because it's a lot of work. So They're we all get them on a volunteers. Saturday, we book them ahead of time and it's not mm -hmm. a problem. But, and that's a problem up. with parking. We get the Boy Scouts to park where well, they have school that day, so we can't. They're not available. The resources we usually have available for Freedom Festival are just not there on a Monday. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was wondering, in the event that we that it is mass chaos and people are just parking everywhere and they block access to like the fire department, hydrants. Do you have anything worked out with a way to move cars? Because finding people at that point is impossible. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have like something worked out with a tow company? You know? I mean, they're, they're, they're aware of it. I've contacted okay. gyms who we generally use. Okay. But no one, it's sort of like this flux chaos that no one knows what's going to happen. Right. So they're like, we could be on 75 pulling cars because there, there was, you know, um, I don't know how, people did that on 75, they stopped. Right to see the eclipse on 75, and then it just created a, you know, chaos. So if that happens, they'll be on 75 moving cars, and then we'll just be in line behind, once 75's clear, we'll be in line. So it's, it's all they're all aware of it, but they're okay. just, they don't know what's gonna happen. Right. No one no one knows who's gonna show up and what the weather's gonna be. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, just real quick, uh, thanks for everything you guys do. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, well, as far as the blight, um, I would really like for you to work on the low-hanging fruit in this town. I know you are. I see like there's probably 10 or 15 boats that are unregistered. To me, that's low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. It's an eyesore for everyone. Boats have to be registered. Is that something that you could work on with the residents a little bit harder this spring? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I, maybe I could ask a lawyer this. <laughs> if a boat's on a registered trailer, can it be in your yard? That, that is a good point. Um, because the uh, device used to take it from point A to point B is registered. So um, if the trailer is registered and has a plate on it, um, I'll have to look into that. I, I, I think where you're going with that is it, it uh, unless it's violating some other part of the Correct. ordinance or placement, et cetera, that can't be in the front yard except back <clears> example. <throat> Unless it's violating some other ordinance. If it's on a trailer that's plated and registered, uh, probably couldn't tow it. 
That's I, I, I've wondered that, and that's been brought up. I've had a couple yeah. chiefs meetings where I brought that up, and they're like, I'll ask our guys, and they've never come back to me, so I figured it's a yeah. good time. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll check yeah. into the furthest because <clears throat> both obviously be if it's sitting there and it's not being used and they're just registering your trailer. Well, there, it's a permanent plate on the trailer now. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't go bad. That's the yeah. that's the whole the issue. The doesn't bad. go bad. Right. Yeah. But the boat yeah. has to be registered for state, the, to the state of Michigan, though, right? To, for use on water. For use on water. For the use on water. Yeah. So Not off water. That's that's the disconnect. It has to be re, it has to be registered to be in the be in the lake. But but if they're if somebody's just putting it on a trailer like the chief said with a permanent plate and it's sitting there. I think we could come up with a way. Oh, there's, I mean, there's ways around it. Like you said, placement and yeah. where's that on the property and so forth. Yeah. I mean, that's just an issue. That's just an issue I've, I've come across. And I think we, could, I think we can uh, uh, meet that challenge if, if it's just sitting there unused because it's a permanent plate and the boat's unregistered. I think we can come up with a way to get that out of there. Good. Okay. You hear that, you two? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have uh, a fire department report. Assistant Chief Welk requested time. Good evening. Does anybody know where I can get a good parking spot for this sequence? <laughs> my house. Well, you know if you didn't move. <laughs> I did. Well, you do have a you can park at my house. Boy, if I haven't heard that. <laughs> um, just to help piggyback on Chief Vandere, uh, Monroe County Emergency Management Division's incident management team uh, met a few weeks ago and we discussed incident action plans and what is everybody doing about the eclipse. It was decided to do a countywide incident action plan. Uh, the incident management team coordinator has completed that plan. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, from a fire department standpoint, we have four individuals that I can count on for sure to be here pretty much most of the day. Um, I have the day off. I'll be in town. I'll be here most of the day. So we should be fairly covered for any medical emergency. Uh, fire emergency, we're going to have to call in uh, mutual aid departments, whether it, was, uh, whether it was a solar eclipse day or not. So that being said, um, regular fire department reports, please forgive us. We are we are learning our new reporting system. Uh, it's a little painful right now, but we're getting through it and trying to get Jolene our <laughs> monthly statistics. It's it's, um, uh, it's been a trip. Uh, but currently, just so you're all aware, uh, year to date we're at 68 calls for the year. Um, last year we ran 265 calls, uh, which was a 29 percent increase from the year before. Um, what I'm here specifically to talk about tonight, I want to give you a little bit of history on one of our grants uh, through FEMA, the SAFER grant for firefighter recruitment and retention. Um, we got this grant almost four years ago through the help of John Zarb. It was for approximately $89,000. We had funding in this grant for marketing, recruitment. Um, it paid for current firefighters, our stipend pay that we get per call. It paid for the new recruits stipend paid per call, paid for some of their firefighter wanted to training. Uh, it paid for their turnout gear, um, physicals, etc. It paid for years of service plaques, gift cards, things of that nature. Um, that grant is due to expire in November of this year. Um, we are looking at applying for it again. Uh, we learned a lot with the previous one, and uh, Dave, Dave is, Dave is uh, learning a lot of post-writing it. The, the hard part we thought was getting it. The harder part is um, maintaining it and keeping up with the requirements that FEMA has for reporting, etc. Um, that being said, we still want to try for this again. It's a big benefit for the city. However. We want to ask for a lot more money. Uh, what we are currently at is $15 per call. We would like to ask FEMA for funding for four years to increase that to 25. Um, Summerfield Volunteer Fire Department is doing $25 per call. 
LaSalle Township is doing 20, I think, on the average. Theirs is a little different because it's a, there's a scale for, it's not everybody gets the same amount, um, but the average is about 20. Our township is doing more. It's just kind of uh, industry standard that paper call stipend is really starting to go up. So furthermore, we were able to get quite a few new recruits with this last grant. And what I feared came true, uh, almost all of them work day shift. Um, that's the concern right now. Last year, 45% of our calls were between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And two people ran majority of them calls, and a lot of the times by themselves. Rick and Terry, who are at some point looking at retiring. Um, we can't allow the city to go unprotected. And early January this year, we had two calls during the day at the same time. And God bless them, but Rick and Terry were both the doctor appointments. Uh, Erie Township had to cover those calls. Um, that's a concern, especially with the bridge being out and everything else. What we would like to do is ask FEMA for a lot of money for daily, a daily station duty stipend. Uh, not an hourly rate, they would get paid a daily stipend. We're looking at $160 per day to staff the station from nine to five. We would like to do this uh, Monday through Friday, excluding the holidays. Um, there's a little bit of logistics to work out. Jolene and Dee and I have been talking about um, how Ida does theirs. Ida has the same grant and, and that's what they've been doing. Um, It'd be four years long, and it'd be close to a $750,000 grant altogether, non-matching. So it would be 100% funded. I am here tonight to kind of bring this up to your attention. We would like to apply for this. I would never ask this council uh, to vote on something this large the night that it was introduced. Uh, I've, I've been on your guys' side of the table, and it's not fun or easy to do. The grant closes April 12th. You guys' next council meeting is April 11th. Um, if you are comfortable with approving it tonight, I would greatly appreciate it, but I completely understand if you want to wait two weeks, then put it on council action, and then we can submit it late that night. Uh, I'll, we'll do whatever it takes. What's the grant called again? It is the uh, FEMA Safer Grant. Safer That's grant. right. Yeah. Okay. And if you have any questions, I'm here right now. Be happy to. So you're asking that council just give you our blessing to apply for this grant? Yes. That's all you're asking. Yes. Yes. And it's not matching. Non -matching. And it's not matching. Yeah. Non matching. It's probably a requirement for the Safer Grant that council approves. There's a checkbox. This is did your local right. authority uh, give you the yeah. thumbs up? So. Yeah. With the Ready? safer grant, they have only because of the safer grant, it has only cost the city five dollars per run. The safer grant covered ten dollars per run. Yeah. So it has saved us a lot of money. And you'll be able to up the, the pay yes as yeah well. we're gonna we're gonna ask them for more than what we're currently budgeting for it now um to help so ice more recruitment and, and, and retention to, to, go. to drum up some more participation from the current membership and, and increase our roster as well does the safer grant help with your um training money it, it does. It helps train the new recruits to get their initial certification. Okay. So, but you're you're not our. Don't current. take it personal. The old guys the old who have guys. been there. No, no. Nope. <laughs> um, it doesn't help with theirs. So, no, they're, okay. because FEMA's theory is they've been on your department. They should already be trained. Right. Okay. Um, to give you just a little bit of an idea of what kind of training they have to go through, they need to have a medical <clears throat> license. Um, and they need to have a firefighter certification. The firefighter certification is now a 260 plus hour program. It's done here in Monroe, and they have to rotate throughout the county uh, where that department will host the class for that month. And then they have to go through a medical first responder program, which is about 88 hours. Now the 
plus side to that is I can teach it and I teach it here and it helps keep the cost down and they don't have to do the driving. All the way down. Do they have to do firefighter one and two both? Yeah, and, and it's just as simple to put them through the firefighter two in Monroe County here because okay. it's a unique program. They actually walk out of there with nine different certifications okay. um, for the tune of $1,500. If you went to Schoolcraft or Wayne County Community it's College or Owens, Firefighter 1 alone would be way more than 1500 yeah, It's a lot so, more. Um, and and our, our association dues are paying for a lot of that training. And I don't know if you're familiar with the fireworks tax, the Michigan's fireworks tax. There's a lot of, a lot of that tax goes towards firefighter training funding and it helps fund a lot of the classes the county puts on. I would assume that they have, you know, they want to know what that person's going to be doing. Uh, would preparation to be a fire inspector, you think, be allowed under that? Uh, that's not considered. It's not the same. Um, operational. Okay. They, they, their only concern is funding operational positions. Yeah. Right. Um, they'll they'll fund a. A, a chief or a captain, but they have to be in operational capacity. They can't be getting paid to be in the office and, and, and do it. They have to be paid to be either on call or on a call. Right. So, so what do they, I mean, so there's no problem with, they'll, they'll be at the fire hall, they'll be doing fire hall duties. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, it'll be station duties. Um, they'll be inspecting recording. the rigs. They'll be cleaning the station. Uh, inventorying supplies I, I we have I believe we have a whole list of things that we yeah. think that uh, but they'll also be able to go on a run yeah. yeah so in it'd be just like a staffed fire station if they get a call they stop what they're doing and they go on the call right so, but it, it, you don't have to make that designation is what you're saying right right yeah you don't have to earmark that out they they know what we're asking for I guess is okay kind of and the thing is what you're asking us to vote on has nothing to do with if they're going to staff the fire hall or not. Uh, yeah, I think it does. Well, yeah. kind of, because that well, is you're, what we're Well, you're increasing the money yes. for that position. Yes. Right, but, but the whole idea is to get a person to staff. It's, it's nothing we've done before, so it is kind of a new thing. It's a new thing. But I, but my theory with this is, if we get it, we got four years to test this out. Right. And see how it goes. And see if we can get Erie on board with a conglomerate of the three departments working together to do something. I have been digging and clawing at trying to do that for years, and, and we're, we're getting there, but it's, it's very slow. And I really think Ida doing it has shed some light on the rest of the county. Yeah, and it uh, works well in Ida. It does. It works really well it in does. Ida. So I think we're there. I think the run volume is, it's one of those things. We're on this cusp with the run volume of, of really needing the staff regularly mm -hmm. and and not and and it does bounce back and forth but we are on on track for 280 this year so that's kind of where we're at we're, we're seeing numbers we've never seen before so um but anything else maybe you guys should start posting yours like they do at erie posting how many calls how many calls they put how many calls they have and a brand new sign too. um we can we have to probably do that I mean, and that way people would notice what you guys actually, do. you know, like I said, at Erie, right by the fire department on their sign, it says how many runs every month they do. And at the end of the year. And then it says total. Mm -hmm. At the end, I've been doing a year end on the Facebook page every mm -hmm. January. Um, and, and maybe I can start doing that more monthly. A lot of the departments in the county. You guys have it. that pretty sign. Use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boss. <laughs> I have a question on the on the urgency, and it has to do with doing it, trying to do it this meeting or doing the next meeting, which would be the day before. Is that going to create a hardship? Do you think? Well, if we have something before us, then we can read. I it? mean, it, it it might give me and Dave Weaver a stroke if we wait till the next meeting. Probably. Well, if if we. Our, our, my next question is with our attorney. Are, are we point of order? Are we okay with? Um, Aren't we just giving them it. permission to apply? Because he's um, got to check that box. You can, I am very comfortable with the with council taking action on this. You're not spending money. Right. Uh, uh, you're giving them authority to submit the uh, 
the grant uh, proposal, and I would encourage you to do it tonight because I don't want to see Chief with a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> now, would that be a consensus this one, this vote one. or attitude? Oh, make a motion. Make a motion okay. and uh, yeah. take a vote. Okay. I'm good with that. So are we going to make that L? L? Did you add the the um, quarter John down there? That's K. Okay. And then if there's any other questions for about any, anything fire related, I'm I'm happy while I'm here to shed light on anything. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have no building report coming out next meeting. Uh, committee reports. Uh, DDA saw the, the minutes there. I I know Sean is here. Is there anything you want to add to the DDA? Uh, what what the DDA is doing? I know they're doing some light working on trying to get uh, new lights coming in. This decorative lighting in the city. It's one of the projects we're working on. We went, turned down for a grant that they applied for. Anything you want to add? Just you don't have to, but give you the opportunity. If you want to come in, Mike. If you if you uh, this is an exciting thing, so if you'd like to share some of the things, uh, I'll give you that opportunity. I won't mandate it. I know I'm calling you uh, last minute. So the, the DDA, uh, we kind of follow the formula that's been set in Luna Pier where you ask for grants um, versus having a, a revenue generating plan. So we did that. We were, we were not selected. So we're going to use the DDA balance and what is coming to basically fund the project with DDA funds. And it'll be lights um, down Luna Pier Drive. We're gonna put new posts up and, and new lights. So that's what the plan is. We're gonna have an informational meeting as required by state law in May of this year. And it will basically explain that to the community, what the DDA is gonna do. So, um, I think that kind of summarizes okay. where we are with the lights. Yep. Can, I, can I, wait, can I, Sean, yep. can I ask, the lights you're doing, are you replacing the old ones that we're are rusted and post down, those are all yeah. going and right. all new? Okay, so we're that's gonna, all I want. We're, yep. we're in the process, um, we've got a subcommittee mm -hmm. and we're in the process of developing the specs that we want. And we're going to try to align that with what planning is doing because the planning committee uh, has had those public meetings and the community has kind of by a uh, straw poll kind of selected the ones they like the best. So we're gonna to try to follow what the people have said they like. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with things that are happening and with the future, the DDA really is vital to where we go as a city with uh, fulfilling our master plan and, and they are, it's fantastic. And their funding, the TIF funding is uh, going to be projected to be larger this year than it was last year. And that's finally coming around to where they've got it going on. They, they have plans and they're getting the funding to make things happen. So thank you very much for your, for your work, everybody that's involved with the DDA. Parks and Rec, we don't have anything there. Uh, planning, um, I think we'll cover that in new business. That's all I have there. We have no old business. Moving on to new business, Kathleen Volk's application to divide the plot of lots. What that is, it says divide the lot because there's no better word. What they're essentially doing is she owns both properties and she wants to move the line a little bit. And imagine, I don't know what the future, you can, you can speculate on what the future plans she has, but if she moves that line, they still will both be conforming lots. It doesn't change anything there. She owns both of them, so there's no dispute with the neighbor or anything like that. Um, they call it splitting a lot, but it's actually just moving the line over uh, a number of feet. That It's really hard to gather that. I, I looked through his documents and I had to ask Mike what's, what, what is this? So she owns both lots, she's moving the line between it, and I don't know what her future plans are for it, but they're still both conforming lots and it doesn't 
change anything there. Just but if she's moving the line, she's decreasing on one she's side. She's decreasing on one and adding to the one that she actually lives in. Actually, you know, there's two. There's a house that she rents and there's a house that she owns. Right. I mean, if she owns a home, but she lives right. in one, and she just requested to move, add a little bit to her house that she li lives in. Mm -hmm. I guess my question would be, I think it's still fair to wonder why this she would like to do this at all so that we can make a better decision. I That's what I was looking for when I was reading through it. I'm, I'm not asking you to answer it. I, I'm not I, asking you to answer it, but I'm yeah. at, I think that's a fair question. Right. And, and I also think that if you own decreasing lots. our lots is probably a bad thing here since they're pretty small to begin with anyway. Although that is, that is a conforming lot, so she could tear the house down and build a new one there and still, I mean, it still conforms. It's plenty of space there to do. And uh, and I, I don't want to speculate on, because I don't know. I can guess, but I don't know. We're not asking that. We're yeah. not asking. Did, did Mike take a look at the subdivision control act? I assume these are platted subdivision lots. Yes. So you can't, uh, you can't amend um, a platted subdivision, you can, but it is a laborious procedure to amend with a plat. So I, I assume she's not asking for a plat amendment, and so she would be changing a legal description, and it would be something along the lines of lot one and the east 15 feet of lot two, and change the tax description. Is that is what's occurring? Because I want to make sure yes. you, I want to make sure you comply with the subdivision control act. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. If if Mike looked at it, he's very well yes. versed in that. Then I I'm making the assumption. It's yeah. Okay. Yes. And okay. and and they did have the plat map out. And and Mike, you're right. He reviews that. Um, he signed off. He signed off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike Mike signed okay. off on it. All right. Then that that's I'm just concerned because the you uh, can't. You can't change the plat without going through a procedure that is it's uh, very painstaking to do. Um, but you can you can change a legal description uh, and you can uh, change a tax description, but it's still going to be lot one and the east 15 feet of lot two. Uh, you're not changing lots. You're not, so you're not really changing lines on a platted subdivision. Right. You're just describing a parcel differently. So will the taxes be different then if she's adding that property over? A new tax uh, parcel should be a. a tax it should all be assessed again, be and yes, it is. Um, and, yeah, and it should be. Our assessor would look at it and mm -hmm. reassess each right. each lot based upon the square footage. And she has reviewed it also, so mm -hmm. she's aware of that. Sorry, didn't want to. That's okay. No, but it no it's appreciated. From, Thank you. It doesn't preclude her from selling that other lot either. She, and, could, she could sell it and it's Correct. Good. So I think it's still fair, in my opinion, I think it's still fair that we ask what the purpose of this is. We can, we can do that. I know she's not. just speculate. In town. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, wanna, does that I don't want to make a decision on speculation. But, but does that does that change mm -hmm. anything if she does or does yep. not? If she keeps it or sells it? It it may because it. I mean, on our, our on our part, does it change anything? Here's, well, here's, here's if she, what it could change. So you're reducing the size of one lot, and so let's say uh, even though there's a structure, a house on that, let's say somebody wanted to take that down and build a new structure on it. So by reducing one lot, you might be setting up a situation where uh, uh, the person would have to come into the Zoning Board of Appeals, request a variance for side yard setback or the like. That's, that's how it could impact um, doing this, potentially. I, yeah, I'm leaning towards the table because people have questions. Uh, I asked Mike that question about it being a conforming lot and a, a buildable lot, and his answer was yes. Uh, the building envelope would just be small. If, if, if we're not comfortable with that, we, it may be better to table it. And I know the person asking is in Florida this time of year, but we'll do that. Um, but they own both I lots. I don't know what the urgency lots. of moving a line would be either. Exactly. So I'm, I mean, I'm leaning towards tabling. That's up to council to 
in the motion, how it's made. And I, you're right, I don't see the urgency right now, yeah, especially if we don't have our questions answered. Well, I don't think we should sit here and keep speculating about it. Exactly. Yeah. Until, I think we all agree on that. Yes. Yep. And I, I until we, we have space. something from the building inspector and things like that, we can listen to you tell us. Exactly. And Mike I told, said this, Mike said that. Yeah. We don't know. Right. And I told you all I know, and that's why yeah. we. So we shouldn't can, speculate anymore. Can we ask her when she comes to Florida, comes back from Florida, to present her case to us? Personally, or no? Is that not something? Can I ask her while she's in Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Well, I meant we, just for her to come I here think, face I think to face. We have all those options before. Us. Yeah. All right. And, uh, this one. And uh, I think we're. Uh, that's all I know, so that's all I'll cover on it. And it's up to council. <clears throat> Zoning ordinance two eleven. I'll turn the floor over to our attorney. Thank you. So you have before you tonight uh, uh, zoning ordinance amendments. Uh, the planning commission uh, worked hard and diligently on these uh, zoning ordinance amendments. And on um, Thursday, a week ago, Thursday, March 21st, uh, a motion was made and unanimous, unanimously adopted by the planning commission to recommend adoption uh, by council of several zoning ordinance amendments. And our Planning Commission Chairman, Sean Reed, is here too, and he can uh, weigh on this if he would like to, but um, I can go over uh, the amendments uh, uh, with you. Uh, I know you've had an opportunity to look at them, but let me just quickly, for the benefit of those who are here attending the meeting tonight, I'll go over it, uh, try to be brief. So, uh, the first uh, of the zone, proposed zoning ordinance amendments is uh, an amendment to, uh, uh, they're all ordinance 211, which is our zoning ordinance. The first one is uh, um, in section 201, which uh, contains the definitions within the zoning ordinance. So the first one is an, uh, an ordinance to amend article 2 of section 201 to adopt the following definitions. Uh, one is the first is transloading, uh, which is defined as load transfer and sorting and or transferring bulk shipments, including but not limited to metal, iron, scrap material, and similar materials from the vehicle container of one mode of transportation to that of another mode of transportation or the same mode of transportation at a terminal interchange point. Transloading shall only be conducted within a fully enclosed building. So that's one definition that would be added to our zoning ordinance. Oh, it might be helpful. Move the microphone over just a little bit. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thank you. The second uh, uh, definition is that of truck terminal, which is defined or would be defined uh, as a facility consisting of a terminal warehouse with truck wells, loading docks, and offices utilized as a shipping point or temporary storage point for the primary business of shipping goods or products for businesses and the general public, which requires the parking of semi-tractors and trailers for indefinite periods. All truck terminal activity, with the exception of loading, unloading at truck wells and loading docks connected to a fully enclosed building, and the parking of semi-tractors and trailers shall be conducted within a fully enclosed building. A truck terminal may include ancillary facilities, such as a repair garage, body shop, and wash bays, provided that all such ancillary facility use shall be conducted within a fully enclosed building. The, def the definition of truck terminal does not include transloading. And the reason for that is that we have a truck terminal uh, here in our city on Evans, and transloading is occurring there, which is in the, S the I-1 zoning district, and that is a current uh, violation of our zoning district. This definition uh, better clarifies that transloading type activities are not uh, allowed uh, at a truck terminal and also not allowed within the I-1 zoning district. So that's <clears throat> the, those definitions. That's the first amendment. I'll move on to the second amendment. And that is also uh, uh, proposed amendment to uh, Article 2 of Section 201, which again is the definition section of our zoning ordinance. And that <clears throat> is intended to 
to find junk yard or salvage yard. And I'll read that for you. An area where waste, <clears throat> any area where waste used or secondhand materials are bought and sold, exchanged, stored, baled, packed, disassembled, or handled, including but not limited to scrap iron, scrap metal, recycled iron and metals, paper, rags, rubber tires, and bottles. A junkyard or salvage yard includes automobile wrecking yards and includes any combined areas of more than 200 square feet on any one parcel for storage, keeping, or abandonment of junk. A junkyard or salvage yard includes a scrapping business and or scrap metal business using loaders, excavators, sorters, crushers, conveyors, skid steers and torches and include same or similar uses and or activity <clears throat> activity that may be identified by accepted industry terms and as may be approved by the planning commission as part of its review of uses subject to special conditions and site plan review and approval but not those uses which are otherwise excluded <clears throat> a junkyard or salvage yard does not include shearing and shredding drop ball breaking cupping drop break hammers or similar equipment and or activity which uses are not allowed. Junkyard and or salvage yard use shall only be conducted within a fully enclosed building with a concrete floor. So that better defines that activity which by the way you'll see would only be allowed in our I-2 zoning district uh, not in the I-1 zoning district. So not allowed um, on the I-1 district on uh, off of uh, <coughs> Evans and but would be allowed after special use approval in our I-2 zoning district, uh, for instance, out on your road. <coughs> Next one. Uh, yes. When you're referring to a building, does that mean a, that, does that automatically qualify that the building has, or, <coughs> or does that mean that the building has to have a roof? Yes. A, a fully enclosed structure. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> yes, which is a great question and important because of, of impact on surrounding property and surrounding zoning districts and, and, and uses uh, that would surround the, uh, this particular land use. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the next uh, uh, proposed amendment uh, pertains to Article 17. And as you know, within Article 17, it's, it's our Kind of our spreadsheet that shows zoning districts, uses, permitted uses, uses by right, and also uh, uses by special by special conditions, special land uses. So <clears throat> within that, um, um, Article 17, uh, schedule of permitted and special land uses, section 1700, uh, industrial is hereby amended as follows. Uh, <clears throat> schedule of permit. Uh, permitted and special land uses. Industrial shall include the, indru the industrial land use defined in Article 2, Section 201 as truck terminal. We just went over that. Allowing said use as a principal permitted use within the I-2 General Industrial District, which is set forth in Article 14. The next one is uh, Section 1700, shall include the industrial land use defined in Article 2, Section 201 as truck terminal as a use permitted, uh, permitted subject to special conditions within the I-1 industrial district, which is Article 13. Next is <clears throat> industrial, uh, shall include the industrial land use defined in Article 2, Section 201 as transloading, as a use permitted subject to special conditions within the I-2 general industrial district. <clears throat> only allowed in the I-2 general industrial district, not allowed in the I-1 uh, uh, district. And that is set forth in Article 14. And then <clears throat> the last one, industrial, shall be amended such that the industrial land use is currently identified as warehousing and wholesale establishment and trucking facilities shall be deleted and shall now shall now be identified as warehousing and wholesale establishments, thus deleting and removing the used trucking facilities. The reason we did that, we have, have it's, it has its own definition in section 201. So next we have a curative uh, amendment, and <coughs> that one pertains to article 13, section 1307, subparagraph one. 
uh, is hereby added to include special conditions for truck terminal. So <clears throat> section 1307, uses permitted subject to special conditions. The following uses may be permitted upon the granting of a permit for such use by the Planning Commission, subject to the conditions here and after imposed for each use and subject further to such reasonable conditions, which in the opinion of the Planning Commission are necessary to provide adequate protection to the neighborhood and abutting properties and subject further to a public hearing in accord with Article 27, public hearings and further shall be reviewed as provided for in Article 30, site plan review and Article 31, uses permitted subject, subject to special conditions. One, truck terminal, subject to the following conditions. A, no truck terminal shall be permitted within 1,000 feet of a district zone for residential use. B, no truck terminal shall be permitted within 1,000 feet of an existing residential use regardless of the zoning classification. The reason that's in there is because oftentimes or sometimes you'll have a perhaps a commercial lot that's zoned commercial but it has a prior legal non-conforming use of residential. So we're attempting to protect both residentially zoned areas and residentially used areas that might be uh, zoned what, different. What was the other um, feet, existing feet before a thousand foot? What was it before? There was there was, there was, was, no, there okay. was no regulation. And are we sure that thousand foot is a good number for us? Well, we we had a lot of discussion at the planning commission about that and. Uh, Yes, we felt that that was appropriate to protect adjacent land uses so that that a use that's more intensive, like an industrial I-1 or 2 use, uh, can exist more harmoniously with a, with a say, in a, a residential use. So the Planning Commission felt that that was, and we had discussion, should that be more, should that be less, but it came down to that would be a fair amount uh, to protect the legitimate state interest that the city has, which is to protect surrounding land uses. Okay. Long answer to your question, but that's the discussion. That no, we have. no, no, thank you. Yep. you, you uh, <clears throat> C, no truck terminal shall be permitted within 500 feet of any other zone district, meaning any other, any district other than residential. D, the distances provided in this section shall be measured in a straight line without regard to intervening buildings from the nearest point of the property parcel line upon which the proposed use is to be located or the zoning district boundary line from which the proposed land use is to be separated. So just to add some clarity, sometimes there's setback distances or separation distances and there's no instruction as to where it's measured from. Is it measured from the, the fully enclosed building to the other, to the other building that's being protected, so that sets forth some clarity. E, all truck terminal activity with the exception of loading, unloading at, at truck wells and loading docks connected to a fully enclosed building and the parking of semi-tractors and trailers shall be conducted within a fully enclosed building with a concrete floor. F, public roadways, services, and facilities affected by truck terminal uses shall be capable of accommodating increased service and facility loads caused by said land uses. G, truck terminal use shall be conducted in such manner to protect the natural environment and conserve natural resources and energy. H, truck terminal use shall be conducted in such manner to ensure compatibility with adjacent uses of land and to promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner. I, truck terminal use and the required site plan shall be de designed to protect the natural resources both on-site and off-site, and shall protect the health, safety, and welfare, as well as, as the social and economic well-being of those who, who will use the land user activity, residents and landowners immediately adjacent to the proposed land user activity, and the community as a whole. J, truck terminal use and the required site plan shall comply with all local, state, and federal regulatory standards for air, noise, water, wetland preservation, wildlife habitat preservation, and land and water pollution control measures. That's very important. Because that brings, as we discussed at the Planning Commission uh, level, 
uh, <clears throat> that brings other state agencies into the mix where we don't have jurisdiction, but we're saying our ordinance requires compliance with those other uh, federal, state, it could be county, uh, state, federal agencies that have jurisdiction. Uh, and then K, all other requirements of the I-1 district shall be complied, complied with regarding height, area setback, screening, screening wall signs, et cetera. So that's that one. <clears throat> Next is uh, an ordinance to amend Article 14, I-2 General Industrial District, Section 1405, Principal Uses Permitted by Repealing Article 14, Section 1405, Subparagraph 3A. You might remember that our ordinance uh, was inconsistent. In Article 17, it said uh, the uh, land use relating to transloading uh, as it was set forth in the definition which we have proposed to redefine to add more clarity. Uh, there was an inconsistency because that designated it as a special land use subject to the conditions. But in Article 14, there was a provision, and I believe it was a mistake uh, when, when it was written, we're, we're repealing that. So let me, if you adopt it, we're, we're repealing that. So let me read this. Uh, Article 14, Section 1405, Subparagraph 3, 3A, which allowed <coughs> junkyards or salvage yards as a principal permitted use in the I-2 General Industrial District is hereby repealed. <coughs> Excuse me. Junkyards or salvage yards shall only be allowed in the I-2 General Industrial District as a use permitted subject to special conditions <coughs> as set forth in Article 17, Schedule of Permitted and Special Uses, and in conformance with the conditions set forth in Article 14, Section 1406, <coughs> subparagraph 6, Article 27, <coughs> Public Hearings, Article 30, Site Plan Review, and Article 31, uses permitted subject to special conditions. So that repeals the inconsistent uh, provision. <coughs> that takes us then to the next one, which is um, an ordinance to amend Article 14, uh, I-2 General Industrial District, Section 1406, uses permitted subject to special conditions by adding subparagraph sub 7 to Section 1406, to include special conditions for transloading. Mine says six. Uh, section, subparagraph six. six. You, have, sub you, have seven. A, you have a, a, <gasps> an old one. Oh, oh we, have old, we have old ones. Um, he's, on, he's on H. Uh, yeah, he's on H. He's on H, not I. He's on H. Let me go back. So I'm on Article 14, Section 1406, Subparagraph 7, to include special that's conditions for transloading. Yeah, that you should. Subparagraph oh, 7. That's on. That's I. I. They were, it's it's, it's 211I. 211I is the transloading for us. Oh, yeah. Not on PDF, anyway. All right. So. Sorry, right, go ahead. Okay. So I don't know if that. Go ahead. Here to do something weird with that or what? But I'll, I'll read what I have here. So, <clears throat> trans, uh, Article 14, Section 1406, Subparagraph 7 is hereby added to include special conditions for transloading. So, Paragraph 7, transloading subject to the following conditions. A, no transloading shall be permitted within 1,000 feet of a district zone for residential use. B, <clears throat> no transloading shall be permitted within 1,000 feet of an existing residential use, regardless of the zoning classification. <clears throat> C, no transloading shall be permitted within 500 feet of any other zoning district. D, thank you. The, <clears throat> is there a gin in there? Maybe vodka, I don't have D, the distances provided in this section shall be measured in a straight line without regard to intervening buildings, that's the same, the same measurement uh, requirement. E, all transloading use and activity shall only be conducted within a fully enclosed building with a concrete floor. F, 
No transloading use shall emit noxious, toxic, or corrosive fumes or gases in such concentrations as to be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, comfort, or welfare, or cause injury to property or business. G. No transloading, transloading use shall carry on any operation that would produce heat or glare beyond the boundary line of the parcel upon which the use is permitted to exist. H. No trans transloading use shall use any form of lighting in a manner that produces glare on public highways, roadways, and or neighboring property. I. Disposal of all waste, <laughs> including but not limited to hazardous waste, shall comply with all local, state, and federal <coughs> regulatory standards regarding waste disposal. J. Public roadway services and facilities affected by transloading uses shall be capable of, of accommodating increased service and facility loads caused by said land uses. K. Transloading use shall be conducted in such manner to protect the natural environment and conserve natural resources and energy. L. Transloading use shall be conducted in such manner to ensure compatibility with adjacent uses of land and to, to promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner. M. Transloading use and the required site plan shall be designed to protect the natural resources both on site and off site and shall, and shall protect the health, safety, and welfare as well as the social and economic well being of those who will use the land use or activity residents and landowner, landowners immediately adjacent to the proposed land use or activity and the community as a whole. And transluting use and, and required site plan shall comply with all local, state, and federal regulatory standards for air, noise, water, wetland preservation, wildlife habitat preservation, and land and water pollution control measures. All, all other requirements of the I-2 district shall be complied with regarding height, area, setback, screening, screening walls, signs, etc. There you have it. That is the proposal. The Planning Commission put a lot of serious, serious thought and consideration into these proposed ordinance amendments. A lot, we had a lot of good discussion. Um, the job, they took the job seriously and uh, they unanimously recommended uh, to City Council that these zoning ordinance, ordinance amendments be adopted. Um, and uh, of course, Sean is here and he might have anything to add. He's the chairman of the planning commission. And Don is a, our planning commission member as well. Uh, first thing I want to say is. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, maybe I missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Sorry, Sean. No problem. Up here and then I might have skipped through that. Let, the one could you pass that down cards. to me? Um, <laughs> for some reason, I wasn't in that packet. There's two of us. Um, no, we, yeah, we went over this one. Yeah, um, it was out of yeah, order. Yeah, yeah I, I had it. Yeah. Oh, the second one. It was out of order from Howard. Um, I, I just when I when you sent this, yeah, I put them in it? order as far as like if oh, you, articles you, you put 13, the number on. I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I put them in order as to like if it was Article 13 and then if it was Article 14, yeah, perfect, so it would perfect. go in order. Yeah, is how I numbered them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we we went over that. So yeah. thank, but thank you. Yeah. I don't want to miss. One. I was flipping them and yeah. I just didn't. Yeah, you know, I just had two. I didn't want to miss it. So yeah, thank and Jolene, thanks because we have to have them. Number uh, prior to adoption, and and I might add, and I th I know you're all aware of this, but uh, the state enabling legislation uh, does not allow city council to adopt a zoning ordinance or a zoning ordinance amendment at the first time it's presented to council. Uh, we had our public meeting as required at the planning commission level, so some, a lot of jurisdictions re would refer to this as the first reading and then we'll have another meeting and that's when council can adopt the zoning ordinance amendment. Sean, thank you. I guess uh, I missed that public meeting. Mm -hmm. I guess that. We have two. Have it, the yeah. Yeah. I had, had, had it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's all. Go ahead, Sean. Okay. Sorry. Sorry you missed it, but it was posted <laughs> as it always is. But anyway, I want to thank the committee. We put a lot of work into it. Uh, thanks to Phil and the mayor for the additional support. Uh, one of the things we did was we took in the totality of the information of Moon Pier residents who did participate and give us their um, concerns, as well as our neighbors in Erie, because where that property sits, it will impact our neighbors. And so um, I, I think that we have to get to a point where we set aside what's always just immediately good for a couple of people here and think of the bigger picture. And the input that went into this was big picture stuff. And so we spent a lot of time and we made sure that we included language to support things that we cannot control by including the state and federal regulations for certain requirements for these structures like the indoor enclosed buildings. We can't enforce that because we can't even enforce blight. But we know that the feds will enforce it because they won't license a facility that doesn't meet their, their specs. And so that's one of the ways that we've, I think, strengthened what we um, needed to strengthen. So um, thanks to Dawn, uh, Megan, uh, Rick, Freddie, and I don't think I'm leaving anybody out. Frank, previously. And well, Frank, Frank, Frank passed the baton to me. Um, and yourself, you put a lot in yeah. us. Yeah, I, I do want to thank Frank for passing the baton to me, like right when, you know, it was like no time on the clock, and I'm at the free <laughs> that, That's how I got it. You know, that's and, how I got it. And he passed it, but um, but I was involved prior to that, and, and he did a good job of the transition. So, you know, it's it it represents what the community wants. So hopefully, you guys consider it and ratify it. Thanks, John. Thank you. I think this shows what kind of pressure they've been under and what kind of work they've done. So I, I want to second that. Uh, all the present planning commissioners, the previous planning commissioners and council as well, because we've all really agonized over this. And, and I think it's a very good piece here. With our attorney. I'm sorry. So are all hearings done and we're public hearing done completed so <clears throat> this is what i'll refer to as the first reading uh, <clears throat> uh, you can make a motion to accept it and uh, and then at our next meeting whenever that is called um, you will then be able to uh, adopt it or not adopt it as you see fit you have the recommendation in front of you um, so at the next meeting that this is on the agenda, you'll be able to take action. If, if you have any questions, be happy to answer them or try to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the thorough explanation because you read it and then you interpret it. Yeah, it, I mean, the, <laughs> Oh. You know, it, it, zoning ordinances, <clears throat> you know, it's probably not your favorite thing to do to read them, but you know, <laughs> I've been doing it for a while, but it, it takes a while for it to sink in as yep. to what it means. Yep. And you can see that, you know, we had the, the planning commission, they had to give careful thought and consideration. So we don't just go to the section or, or article 13 or 14 and change that. Oh, you got to change the definition. You got to change Article 17. You got to make sure that everything uh, dovetails. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we covered items through item H. Uh, if there's no more questions, we'll, I think we'll have a chance to weigh in later. But I think we'll move on to an I, uh, Planning Commission application by Marilyn Foster. And she's here tonight, and she knows what she's going to get to. And I appreciate her uh, applying and, and stepping up to that really important position. Gear uh, repair estimates. We the northeast wind storms that we've had previous weeks did some damage there. I called. 
uh, Mid American groups called Matt Thompson. The day we discovered it, he was able to come over that evening and, and take a look at it, get a quote, and then Councillor Donnelly was able to talk to him. And do you want to explain what you guys talked about with uh, possibly putting a metal plate over? That? Sure. I reached out to him after I went and looked at the uh, the damage. And it's probably the biggest repair that we need on that on that pier ever before that I'm aware it, it, of. It, yeah. I'll, I'll... Um, so I went out there and I thought of an idea that would substantially help the repair last for substantially longer time than our current repairs. They seem to pop off, chip away, a uh, wave comes and all the all the rocks are gone. So I thought of an idea of laying down a sheet of diamond plated steel over that inlaid into the uh, concrete as he's making his repair. So his original repair would happen and then we would protect that repair with a sheet of uh, steel over it, bolted down or um, you know, uh, fixed down to the deck of the pier itself. And I feel that it would, be, uh, would last way longer than it currently would, potentially. That, that was confident that we could coat it to avoid a slip? Yes, so we had the conversation about uh, non-slip, non-trip, <clears throat> and that's why he wanted to, I mentioned to him, if we could just do the repair and then eventually go back over it and put the sheet down, and he said we want to avoid the trip hazards. So he would want to do it now, and what he, would, what he wants to do, what I asked him to quote us for was to go over the repair about two foot onto good concrete, cut down about a quarter inch or whatever the thickness is of the plate, embed it down into the repair and into the deck, and then it would that repair would be sealed off for quite a long time. Uh, that total, he quickly put some numbers together for me tonight, and it came an extra $1,213.89. He originally said it would only be, our first conversation was only around 250 bucks just to put a piece of steel down. And then we talked about the non-slip and everything else. And then I mentioned I'd like to go over the repair. So we're into some good concrete. And uh, what his quote came back to about 6.30 this evening was uh, an extra $1,213.89. So our, our total would be, if we went with the option, would be $6,604.93 instead of 5,391. Um, I think the way these repairs are going, um, I did ask um, if they are engineered, designed, uh, Neil and I talked, and the repair work that they do is not engineered, designed, it's just patch repair, that's what they do. And their company uh, offers a one year you know, repair, repair warranty, but we all know when it freezes and thaws and the waves, it comes up and the first wave comes up, all the rocks are gone. This way, that sheet will protect it. Um, so that was an option I put together. It's a pricey option, but I think it would last much longer. Where actually <coughs> is the repair being done? It's just after the bend, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just after the bend and it's on the, on the east side of the pier. Yeah, I tried to show the photo. I have a few yeah. more. I tried to show the photo where. I was fine. Well, you kept seeing the rack, so that was kind of wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it makes sense because yeah. I know yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, That's I, can, right. I can show you, but my phone's tied up right now. Yeah. Matt, I, I have a question for you. Um, you said that it's not an engineered repair. Do they have engineers that work for them that come and look at the pier? To... I didn't ask that question. I just asked if the repairs are engineer designed. Okay. He said no. When was the last time that the pier was checked by an engineer or inspected for structural integrity? Well, being that we have like that that repairs, it's quite an open hole going into the yeah. pier. Yeah. So the repair would would fix that hole. Um, but to answer your question, I don't have that answer. Right. Um, it, I think I, I do know uh, they do have engineers on staff. I also reached out to a former resident who works for Pullman Group, and he's handled some major projects. And he agreed to come over and take a look at it and just see if it's something they don't do to make recommendations to the company. I 
Councillor Wakeman probably has a few contacts that we can go to. We're, we need to do that in the long term. This is an emergency patch, but obviously we need to go all the way down and get a, an engineering study, and that's gonna, it's gonna cost us. I was trying, I was going that direction and seeing with the DNR before, the answer I got was fix your uh, unresolved conversion and gave us tips on how to do that and then we can talk about grants. We have we, we have what's called an unresolved conversion. We sold a lot that was, it was encumbered as part of a grant and then a generation of counselors and mayors came, went by, came and went and nobody knew about it and they sold it. And DNR came back and said, where's that part? Uh, we've been trying to resolve that. Mayor Davidson was trying, to, was trying to resolve. We've made some progress on that, but we have not resolved it. So to get any kind of funding from them is not possible yet. But we definitely have to go in that direction. We, we need, it's 40 years old. We, we need engineers to look at it and do a reconstruction. Can we even say with certainty right now that, I mean, because I mean, I, I don't know if everybody went out and looked at it, but with the, the rebar and everything that's corroded away and then gone, and there are, there's multiple spots throughout the pier that are open holes. I mean, if we were to pack that pier elbow to elbow with people like they plan on doing for the eclipse, I mean, is that safe? I, I, I'm not an engineer to answer that question, question, but I would say yes. I would say we're safe, yeah. And, and they do guarantee that uh, is it two years? It's a one, one year. One, one year. year. Okay, okay, one year warranty. I asked them honestly. I said, "Do you think this extra funds, you know, this repair that I mentioned, would help?" And he said, "Yes, it would substantially help the longevity of the repair yes. for the obvious reasons." And, and this buys us this buys us some time to do that engineering study and try to find find the money to do the study and find the money to uh, do it right. Marcus, I'm sorry. Go ahead. John? Yeah. As I hold the picture up in front of you, uh, is the plate just going on the top? Because I see damage on the front. I haven't been here all week, so I haven't been able to get out there. Is, is there not damage on the cylinder that the cap is actually sitting on? Yes. And is the plate going to be here on the face, or is the plate just going to be on the top? I need to make sure. We, I want to uh, walk with him out there and make sure exactly what we're doing, but I believe it's just going to be on the top uh, for now. Um, I'm not sure. They will They will fill that front face. The front face will be filled in with concrete yes. as the original repair. Yes. Um, but I was just uh, speaking of the deck. They probably okay. won't put steel plate on the front face. They could. I don't. I, I told yeah. them. I said I want you know nothing. Nothing exposed. All sharp edges. You know, cut away and everything embedded in. Okay. Uh, but yeah. And Thank he, you. He was reasonably certain. If, if weather, barring <coughs> really bad weather, that they could get it done before the eighth, and that we wouldn't have to close the pier off completely. They can work. My, my question is, the money to repair the pier isn't coming out of flood and erosion, no, right? No, it will not, okay. because that's really not a flood. I know, that's why I just want to make sure that we we have to pull that money from somewhere else. Yes, we would, my recommendation is parking, and since our attorney's here, we collect that, the parking fees, and we tell them that we use those fees to do maintenance and our beach raking and do things like that. I think it's important to pull the money out of there to, so that we show that yes, we're not just collecting a tax, we're giving a service for this. I think that helps. Is that, does that make sense? What kind of yeah, that yeah, makes sense. I, I, it's not a restricted fund, right? So um, I think you can use it for that. And that's, I think, principally part of what you intended to, to use it for. Yeah. It's really your, your, designating what I'll call general fund money to be used for a, for a city project. So uh, you're fine. Yeah. And that account does have enough, the funding is there and that the money's there. We wouldn't have to transfer it. I have a question. 
So um, the quote here says a standard one year warranty guarantee based on normal weather conditions. Anything on the piers, I mean, that's a normal weather condition, but some of their other work, they did not stand by the warranty and the repairs that they did come out and warranty replaced six months ago are already cracked and chipping away now. I think, well, the repair itself was not chipped away. We had one spot that did, that did not bond and they came out and they fixed that one. Uh, there was a couple spots like that. I know that they repaired And it lasted the, the, the length of their warranty. However, as in this case too, they, every, you know, what they bond to, everything is fixed there. And they went back to solid, but it deteriorated around the patch. and and. It's hard to hold them to it because we need a whole thing replaced. I, I know, but what I'm saying is the repair, the warranty work that they just did six months ago is already cracked and chipping. Your other spots. I, I know, but if you look at it, it's not the pair, the, the crack itself. It's the material around. I got Beyond, pictures. Yeah, I, I've been up there. I, I see it. Uh, there's only so much they can do when they go back to what's solid. And, and then it, that, is, um, that is their repair that's cracked. Um, and that is probably, I don't know, it's it's as good as we're going to get on a 40 year old here, I think. The, I mean, is that as good as we're going to get out of the company? Because that's six months and it's already I cracked. Think it's, it's challenging. Um, I, that actually has the advantage of being thicker than. There's more material there. It's really the thin ones. It's that the thin material ones. that breaks away. Yeah, that, those are the hardest ones. Actually, the worst cases where it's real thick like that, it really bonds. They can work with that better. Is there another better. company out there that fits? I, there probably is, but um, we can. We are under pressure right now, and there's we've we've had very little success in the past getting anybody out to give a, an estimate. And I think one time we did, it was exorbitant. Well, while we're waiting, can somebody at least put some safety cones around at the end to uh, open hole I, up here? We can paint, but safety cones will blow off if we have yeah. the wind Or space. something, or yeah. I we have orange paint. We can we can paint it, but I, I thought about that with safety cones. Yeah. No way, because it was a rough day when we went out there, and there's they blow right back in the way. So we uh, we can paint. I believe Matt said that uh, they could start next week. Yeah, if, that's it. You got the okay. And I, and I think we're under the gun on this. Uh, with <clears throat> terrible timing of that eclipse. Even though it's, I mean, not, not even the eclipse, if something, right. someone falls and trips, they can sue us. It's walleye season. They're, yeah. they're catching walleye, so it's it's definitely getting used. Probably an eye opener happen. for us to yeah. look at some engineering fundings and yeah. try to I, come I, up with a plan. I agree. Yeah, a long term plan to fix it, or it's just going to be Luna. Any other questions on that? No. I think uh, we'll move on there. This was like this one, uh, I buried my. The Port of Johns, uh, we talked about that, and we'll, we'll work on, you know, uh, I'll wait to the motion to resolve the number, but I think we talked that one, and that's, those are the two extra items we added, uh, and the safer frame, and we talked that one. You didn't do public comment. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to now. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you're jumping around. No, no, no. I'm, I'm making sure we have everything because we added a couple. We added two agenda items. And now That's not on we are at public comment. So the floor is open. <coughs> we welcome you. Kelly Laro, forty three fifty South Sixth Street. I'll be brief. It's been a long night for everyone. Um, <clears throat> Sergeant Price, just on the record. I wish him well in his retirement. He was amazing at what he did. He produced so much from the, from the time he was here. I really appreciated him. Um, again, with planning also, I barely knew that there was a hearing, but I had faith in the planning commission and Phil, and I knew that I had been keeping close tabs 
and it felt like they had covered everything they could possibly cover. And I just want to thank them again publicly for the great work that the Planning Commission has done. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to capitalize real quick while Phil's here. Thank you. You're one of my favorite people. <laughs> so, um, and I believe that um, back to the blight thing, there, you know, there is, you know, absolutely the low hanging fruit is something that we should be working on every day because that's well within our capacity to do that. Um, everywhere, everybody is doing more and more and more and less, but less and less. And I mean, that's, I've been in the same industry for 33 years and um, every, every year I feel like I'm doing somebody else's job. That's just the way it is. Um, <clears throat> so with that, I want to bring up one property in particular that I know is going to be a challenge. And that is uh, 4338 Fifth Street. That is a property that is among one of the worst ones in Lakewood. And it's owned by a now third, fourth, fifth generation LLC. And the deed is tied to hundreds of other properties um, with millions of dollars on the deed the last time I checked. So that one is going to, because it's just, in 2012, I went through that house and I contacted the, you know, the city and suggested at that time that it be condemned. Um, the north side? Pardon me? North side of 5th Street? North side yeah. of 5th Street. Brick it, house? Right? Yes. Yeah. It's in tough shape. Um, we may need some special help with that one is why I'm bringing it up while we have the chief here and while we have Phil here. That one might take a little bit of a special attention. I don't know what kind of leverage we have with houses that are tied up like that, but that house is like that. Now we just had one on 4th Street. Finally, after like 10 years, it was, it's green. Everybody knows which one it is, I think. And it's, that one, I have the address, it's 4335 4th Street. But that one took, you know, a number of cycles to go to the tax, tax auction. Somebody bought it and it's immediately back up for sale by owner again. It probably should be plowed down. So these, you know, there's one or two that are just exceptional challenges that I think would have a lot of significant impact um, by leading a charge with those. So. I don't know what kind of leverage we have with third party LLCs like that where they're bundled, but that particular LLC is actually in a lawsuit case for, you know, bankruptcy. So that house is going to sit there for like 10 years and it's, <laughs> I mean, the grass last summer was this tall. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just another tough one. I don't know what we have. And I, you know, again, with respect to our resources and priorities, it's just kind of putting a bookmark on the priorities. Um, a question um, is in the future with our zoning ordinance, skipping topics to the zoning ordinance. In the future, if we don't have someone actively applying for a permit, are we able to make updates to our zoning ordinance? Is it just because we had active cases kind of looking for, for permits that we couldn't change our zoning ordinance? If we find room for improvement in our zoning ordinance in the future, what is our process? <clears throat> Same process, and it, it, it can be done. Uh, at any time. So if you identify problem areas uh, <clears throat> that, that need to be maybe inconsistencies or problem areas or updates, uh, the Planning Commission uh, can review it, uh, make a recommendation to City Council, okay. same, as, same as this process. This one was special because we had applications on the table, is it? It, it was, uh, there was an inconsistency um, and we knew that that we had to fix it. And you know, there's a Michigan Supreme Court case that uh, clearly states that the zoning ordinance that is in effect at the, at the time uh, the court hears the case is the zoning ordinance that the court will apply for the situation. That's why we wanted to fix this. Thank you for the clarification for the future. I'm sure that you know everywhere on every topic we always find things that we can mindset want to prove. And lastly, this is just, um, just a plug. So I'd like to add that um, council on the other side of this may have been using a fear tactic or whatever, I don't know, but uh, they were clear, claiming that before we started, or before, sorry, not we, before you all started the process with amending the zoning ordinance, that there was going to be the ordinance that currently exists. Right. As in, don't bother. Right, right. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, right. There's a lot of processes for him to work through. So the, the, the steps going forward, I think, are just a topic for another time. But um, just something for us to consider going forward is when I hear about the pier, and I've just watched the pier this past week, 
and it's significant. You know, I see the, the damage that's happening to it all the time. Um, and our roads, I think it's, I've said it before, but I think that it's, I think it's, we need to really start planning for the future with small millages of earmarked money for our roads and our flood protection. Um, I don't know how we go about doing that, but I think it's important that we start educating people that, I mean, it's the tax, we have to have tax dollars saved up. Just like we do, we have a small flood millage now, we have a small police millage, we have a small fire millage, but the road, the roads, we do not have uh, a fire. We, we do not have a fire. I'm sorry, I'm confusing that with another one that's coming up in another township close to us. But <laughs> you know um, we, I wish we did. I would, I would vote yes on a small fire. Though, but um, I mean, I vote yes for the police millage. I vote yes for the flood millage. But I'm just saying that with our flood concerns and our road conditions, we might need to start thinking about a little <clears> bit more. And if we do a little bit in advance over time it's not as impactful to the residents. And it's an investment in our community, and it's an investment even to us personally, so. That's actually a good question. Do we have like poverty restrictions that prevent, preclude us from doing anything like those types of villages? I don't think so, um, but I'd have to look at that. Um, you know, we have that proposal, and, and uh, I'd have to look at that. Um, we have to look at how much we have, how much room we have. How because much, how we, much you can millage. Right, you can only millage yeah, so much. Certain, and certain. we have a yeah. judgment bond and a lot of other things that we have to consider. I mean, yeah, I there, is, there is a cap. Right. Mm -hmm. Not related to poverty, but there is a cap on, on uh, what you can ask the citizens to approve for right. the villages. Yeah, but I apologize. I know there's not a fire I'm just yeah. rambling. The, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I think we should have a fire Well, you know, I vote yes on those things because they provide a good outcome. You know, so, I mean, you can see right away that our roads are really getting bad. And we don't, I mean, everybody wants the roads fixed, but people don't realize we don't have money for the roads. So, so just to, I guess as a citizen saying, it's something that I would consider voting yes for. And I think it's important that we start planning this, even if it's not a reality for a year or two or three down the road on a ballot. So, thank you. Can we find out what our, uh, yeah. Yeah. What our options are on the city? Sean Reed, yeah. Second Street. Um, I just want to comment on the whole Mellis thing. Before you get a millage, every last person sitting up there better be thinking about an economic development plan. I've been here five years, and the city council has not done nothing to generate any revenue. And if you prove me wrong, let me know. Because everything that's come to you that's generated revenue has come from the sausage makers. And y'all know what I'm talking about. That's where the revenue is coming from. So before you start thinking millage, I suggest you think about economic development and developing a plan because you haven't had one since 2019 when I got here. The other thing, Ordinance 161, 167, <coughs> and 168 are going to be reviewed by planning related to blight. For example, what was done the last time was in 2000 and it was probably grandfathered in. Thank you, Don, for telling me that. Fines were twenty-five dollars, fifty bucks, and a hundred bucks. No one's gonna pay attention to that. The new fine should be somewhere. Maybe we start at five hundred. I got a neighbor, a neighbor on North Second Street, that consistently stacks up stuff that's garbage. Old tires, just any old refrigerator, and the guy lets it sit there for months. So my security cameras start picking up cats running across the street because they're chasing mice from all that stuff that he's got out there. So I just want the council to understand that planning will be bringing some ordinances for blight and they're gonna come quick. So we're not gonna drag this thing out. So this time next year, we're still sitting here talking about what we wanna do and what we don't wanna do. The last thing I wanna say about is back to economic development. It's time that we get past any petty grievances and start thinking about how we generate money because grant management is irresponsible, especially a competitive grant. That's what I do. I do that. I'm working in that world every day. And I can tell you that that's not a responsible economic development plan. 
So let's get past all the petty stuff and generate some revenue so that when we do have an opportunity, and if it's matching requirements, then at least we got the money to do it. Thanks. Anybody else? William Garger, Ellen Street. Um, I'm a retired stack builder. I, so I'm, I'm actually a concrete technologist. I'd like to work with you on the on the dike and with Mid America. I've worked with Mid America before, and other people that do gunite is. You said Pullman Power. I've worked with Pullman Power before, um, Mid America, and I can't think of his other name. I'll co I'll come up with another name, and actually go talk to him. And I guess you can see some of my work would be some of this two kind of smokestacks here in BTE. That's some of my work. And six other smokestacks from here to Florida. So yeah, I'd like to volunteer my expertise and help with the dike repairs. I'm one of the founders of the flood committee and I'm the one that actually come up with the idea to spray the gun on the dikes. And it is very tricky to work with new concrete, attaching it to old concrete which there's better ways to do the spraying of the gunite right now by adding steel and mesh, which is going to pay more. So you might just consider getting for a better job. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Marilyn Foster, Quarter 360 South 5th Street. I think that's my address. Here. Um, here. Just a, a winter went by, and no one, I know that it was way too busy last year, but the trees on the beach, the bushes have become trees again. And if you're going to try to get them out, you have to do it soon. Um, that's. My thing. Yeah, just a reminder because they, it's, you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't pull them up manually now. I don't, I, I, not, I couldn't, but. <laughs> what was the response from, from DPW? It was when it was brought up by Mark the last time we yeah. were going to check with DPW. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the things, uh, it, you're right, it's hard to do in wintertime. Yeah, um, but now have to. they didn't touch them at all last year. Yeah, not one bit, and um, now they're getting worse and worse and worse. Mr. Mayor, may I speak? Yeah, sure. Um, hey, that's it for me. I had a uh, quote uh, late last fall come in from one company. I called probably at least eight or nine companies to have brush removed to get a quote along the wall from the beach all the way down to the end and one person got back with me and i must have called nine people um, nine different companies that one person did come out and gave me a quote and uh, it was the late fall and we never discussed it and i just wanted to say you know on record uh, we're going to start our flood and erosion uh, committee back up uh, next month and that is on the agenda to, to take yeah. care of um, the dike wall needs to be uh, assessed and we have, I've gotten several emails and pictures of areas that need to be addressed. And I just want to let everyone know that we will be working on that uh, first, first of spring, as soon as the weather breaks, to at least put a plan together. Uh, I've introduced myself to Matt uh, this week, let him know um, I'm on the meet, I'm on the committee, and look forward to working with them. So just, just so we know, we're going to try to clean everything mm -hmm. up and get, get repairs done if we can. Yeah, all the way, all the way down. Yes, yeah. it, it, it's a big job, and it may need to be contracted. It's a big job. I think he quoted me like five thousand yeah. dollars. He was going to cut all the trees down, put the tar, the whatever stuff over it, so they don't regrow. Um, it's yeah, a big job. The DPW handles really. They, they go through and do the earth and dike. Um, when you know, and, and even that, that they're they're taxed. It's, Two people, three, but um, and then the marsh area inside the inside the pier, 
it's becoming a marsh. And I know there was uh, problems that people wanted that cleaned up, which you probably should. Uh, again, that's just a problem that's always going to happen. There's nothing we can really do about it except go down and cut stuff down and let it grow back up. Yeah, there's some evil permitting. I don't think it's a problem, but you do have to look for the eagle to okay. school the ordinary out of the water. Is that area part of the FEP committee? No. It, no. It's not it's not really the no. you know um, it's more of a city issue. The dike everything along the dike, but I mean we if we're if we're working together on it and if we're all in the same interest we can partner on it. Okay. Anybody else? If not we'll Close the public input section and move on to council action. A, we have Kathleen Volk's application to divide plotted flats or plotted lots. Do I have a motion? I propose a motion to table the application from Kathleen Bokes to divide the plotted lots 5115.001.030 and 51.1115.11.5.001.20 with all necessary approvals being paid and presented the way the reading until we have further, uh, a little bit more information on what's happening with the lots. Second. We have a motion, we have support. Any discussion? I just, should that be a roll call vote or if there's all in favor of it? Uh, I would prefer a roll call. Okay, thank you. Uh, Perry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Wakeman? Yes. Gramsa? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, action item is tabled. Zoning Ordinance 211, Amendment 211D, first reading. I'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211D. Approve the reading or? Sorry, first reading as presented. And waive the reading. Second. We have a motion, we have support. Any discussion? We'll do a roll call. Perry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Lakeman? Yes. Ramza? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. Zoning ordinance number 211. Uh, e. I'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211 E. First reading as presented, waive the reading. Second. We have motion, support. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Wakeman? Yes. Brands up. Yes. Perry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Motion carried. Zoning ordinance 211, amendment. Number 211F. I'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211 F. First reading as presented, waive and reading. Second. The motion, board, discussion. Roll call vote. Meeting? Yes. Ramza? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Wakeman? Yes. Perry? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Motion carried. Zoning 211, amendment two, number 211G. I'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211 G, first reading, reading as presented, waive the reading. Second. Motion, support, discussion, roll call. Donnelly? Yes. Wakeman? Yes. Ramza? Yes. Perry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Motion carried. Zoning ordinance 211, amendment number 211 H. I'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211-H. First reading as presented, we waive the reading. Second. Motion, support, discussion, roll call. Donnelly? Yes. Wakeman? Yes. Gramza? Yes. Perry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Mayor Garner? Yes. Motion carried. Zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211-I. We'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211-I, first reading as presented, waive the reading. Second. We have a motion, we have support, discussion, roll call. Donnelly? Yes. Wakeman? Yes. Ramza? Yes. Perry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Mayor Gardner? Yes. Motion carried. Zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211-J. 
I'll make a motion to approve the zoning ordinance number 211, amendment number 211-J, first reading and waive the reading. Second. Motion and we have support. Discussion? Roll call. Wakeman? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Granza? Yes. Perry? Yes. Meany? Yes. Mayo Garner? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, motion is carried. Moving on to Planning Commissioner application, Marilyn Foster. We'll make a motion to approve the Planning Commission application from Marilyn Foster. No, no, hold on. I, I, I am a appointing Marilyn Foster to the Planning Commission subject to council approval. Oh. That's out. Sorry. That's out. Sorry. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the Planning Commission application from Marilyn Foster and appoint her to the Planning Commission with her term expiring 1-15-2028, effective immediately as presented and waive the reading. Second. We have a motion, we have support. We'll do a roll call. Um, Wakeman. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Ramza. Yes. Perry. Yes. Needy. Yes. Mayor Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for not running out of the room. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> Wait till the first meeting. <laughs> do we have a motion for the peer repair estimate? I propose a motion to approve the concrete repair on the pier in the amount of $6,604.93. That is the additional amount for the sheet metal repair um, from Mid America Group to repair as presented, waiving the reading. Support. We have a motion. We have support. Only dis any discussion? No, I had no, I had it. Was that? So I think we already kind of had. Okay. Yep. We had that one. And I just will add that we I can plan on pursuing a longer term, longer range solution after this patch. We'll go to a roll call vote. Perry. Yes. Meeting. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Ramza. Yes. Mayor Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. Uh, Board of Johns. We don't have the motion written out, but to. Uh, we want to supply uh, Port of Johns. I'll let you put in the number there. Uh, I already am asking for eight at, uh, at um, Memorial Park, two, which makes 10 down by the boat ramp because the people will be parking down there. Erie Road. Uh, I'm sorry, we have to, um, it's, you have to have a pass to park at the park, the boat ramp, don't you? Mm -hmm. Isn't yes. that a violation? Yes, yes. no, yes. you will. So we're going to get it, you're going to give a porta potty out there and then write tickets right next to them? Mm, well, I mean, it, if people are going to be there, they probably should be there. I mean, it, the, the, they're going to be looking for places to go and they're not going to walk all the way to the light up or Memorial Park. And they will pay for parking there too. So we're just trying to we're just trying to guess where people will be, and yeah. and and I'm just making a suggestion. I'm open. And you want two of the pair? Uh, I don't know. You you guys tell me. I I say no. 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 I mean one. We don't <laughs> have one. None. We don't have one there all year for the boaters that go there. Where do you think they go all uh, summer? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, there's not one there for the gun range. There's you know. Right, but that's an open. You know, to where this is where you're going to have a huge crowd down there and where are they going to we go? don't even have one down there for the freedom festival you will you may for this because that's where they're going to park and freedom festival activities there this the activity are up in the sky i mean so they may gather there it's up to you it was suggested earlier but well we're giving you our opinion okay. and our opinion is well, yeah. you don't need two at the boat all right well give me a, give me a count on the motion that's what i'm that's what i'm saying give me a, give me a, you know i, I can't. We have a motion. I mean, I'm waiting for a motion on the table with a number attached to it. And then we can go from there. Over there. 10. If we have no motion. Well, I think we um, may have a responsibility for something about that. It's just. I, the question of where? Yeah. yeah. Do we need eight of them at Memorial Park? 
I would rather or should have we a, scatter them around we, a little we could bit put, more? I think we just have to have them available. And, and I think. Well, people aren't going to want some water from our park <coughs> memorial park for the bathroom, though. But, uh, we could do a couple down here. I, I'm recommending. I'm recommending ten. Where we put them, we can decide that. Um, but I'm recommending ten. Yeah. If I if we have a motion, we'll go by it. I'll make a motion to procure ten porta johns that can be placed at the discretion of consensus between police, fire, safety, and the city workers. <coughs> There's Thank my you. motion. Thank you. Is there support? Probably not. <laughs> Those are at $100 each. Support. Yeah. For, yeah. 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 $1,000. This will be $1,000. Support. support. Mark, yes. We have a Mark motion. We have support. <coughs> for discussion. Let's do a roll call vote. Wait. <laughs> yeah, you you said any more discussion, let's do a roll call vote. No, I looked that way. Sorry. Do you, you, you have more to add? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Um, I have, I, I don't think we need 10, but that's my own personal opinion. I have a problem with if you want to put eight of them in Memorial Park. Because when you talked earlier, that's where you wanted to put the majority of them. Yes, and but the reason, then in turn, you're telling me the majority of the people are going to be down at the boat launch. No, I'm saying they might be there. We can put them. We can put okay. them all in Memorial Park. So the phone call. No, Don, I'm no. Sorry, I think that's why I added at the discretion Fresh of a greater okay, consensus of people. Okay, but I, I just, just want you to realize yeah. that some of us believe they don't all have to be in Memorial Park. I, I understand that. And it's the discretion of everybody, not just the mayor's discretion. I uh, actually, actually, um, okay, it's have at council, it. but, It's your discretion. But but we'll do it the right thing. Now the phone calls we're getting are almost all of them. Is your beach open? Is your pier open? They almost over what over all pretty much all of them that ask that is that area open? That's the area we plan to go. That's why I'm putting them there. Now, if I'm gonna get advice and we're all gonna discuss it, we'll put them, but I think we should have 10 here. That's my main thing. If, if that's all I'm asking is 10, the rest of it we can sort out. And I'm not in stone on that, you know, where they go as long as we have them in the city. So that's, that, that's my answer. Uh, any, any further discussion? We'll do a roll call vote 10. Okay, Graham's up. No. Perry. No. Neen. No. Um, Wakeman. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Mayor Gardner. Yes. Can I go to the runner? <laughs> call, yeah. call Diana. Phil. <laughs> Phil. Yes. There you go. Yeah. I mean, how, how do we handle I'm, that? No, I'm saying yes. What oh. Votes. <laughs> um, I'm saying the motion, the motion fails. Yeah. That's the majority. We, can we change the number? And do that? Somebody has to make a motion. Somebody, Somebody has to make a motion. Somebody Somebody had had motion. Or if it dies on the table. Can, can we, the motion as presented fails for someone who would care to make a new motion. A new motion that's different than the first motion, you can do that. I propose a motion to present as many porta potties as we need by Friday before by checking the weather to make sure if it's going to be sunny or if it's going to be rainy. Do we need four or do we need ten? Well, mm. that's a tough range. one. A range. A okay. range. Um, that's a tough one. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's a tough one to get ten porta potties over here if it's going to rain that day too, and they're just going to sit there. And we're going to spend a thousand. We're going to spend a thousand dollars for nothing. Well, to be honest, I would rather spend that thousand and be covered, because I know people are coming rain or shine. They will not take a risk of the sky opening up and they missed. They've told us that. All right. I'll. I'm going to read, do my motion. I propose a motion to approve 
five porta potties uh, for the amount of $100 a piece for the event on April 8th. We have a motion to add support. Have support. We have a motion. We have support. Any more discussion? We'll go to roll call vote. Um, Graham's up. I'll support. Aye. Yes. Harry. Yes. Needing. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Thank you very much. I think we owe it to our citizens and we owe it to the public for health and safety. And I think it's a good decision. Uh, uh, last one, I, I think there's one more here. Oh, uh, the safety, oh, the the safety, safety grant. grant. Okay, I couldn't read my own writing here. I knew there was one there. Uh, the safety grant. Do I have a motion? I make the motion that we allow the fire department to apply for the FEMA safety degree. Grant. Second. We have a motion. We have support. Any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Needing. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Ramza. Yes. Perry. Yes. Mayor Garner. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. Council input and information. Let's start on this again tonight. I think everybody's heard enough from me for the last week. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I noticed um, from at least seven houses south of the lighthouse along the green belt between the deck and the residence yes. there, and infiltration of molds. And I followed that all the way back to the Memorial Park here. That first street park, which is the one that's closest to the lighthouse. That's Memorial Park by the lighthouse. That's got a pretty serious infiltration, which appeared, if you follow the trails, they eventually went out to the pier, and then they go along the pier, and then they come down haphazardly, and now they're going into all the residents. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty serious infestation there. Um, We're going to have to probably work together on how to solve that because. Yeah, you know our, you can see all the trails going from the pier because they go out until they hit it, and then they start going down, and then there's single trails going up almost every resident. Okay, we we do have a pest control expert that we hired that will be coming into the city soon. We can uh, uh, definitely uh, seize that opportunity and look for look for more. Just to get some price. But how soon is soon? sooner than later? It uh, he's coming in. The, uh, but the that's back the back guy. That's back guy. But he's a pest control. He does everything. Um, we can look at it. He probably a pest control company is probably the one you need. Um, we, not you. Right. We we do. <laughs> um, but that's what I'm saying. That's that's who specializes in that. It's not really a traveler that you get. Like, no. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, well, look into it. I give him a call and see if he can want to look at that. I mean, I'm sure he'll make a trip out of the house. Give us an estimate. But it's for Cyrus. Just walk around out there and you'll yeah. be pushing down a lot of grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am, I'm up there, but I guess I'm on the table anymore. Let me do that on my bike. All right. Uh, Don't take uh, your bike. No. I'll give him a call and, and I'll, I'll start with that guy since we have some kind of relationship and we'll see. Uh, was, Make sure he makes the round to see where it's not just there locally. Okay. Yep. And whose responsibility is the green belt for that type of thing? I guess that's another question. If the city owns that, you're talking about the city owned property. Well, right? we were responsible for mowing it for some reason, but no, we own it. Is the... It's city property. Go ahead, Don. Yeah. The green you're calling that that is all considered part of First Street Park. So yes, it is city owned. Yes, the residents have always maintained, maintained it. it. Yeah, that's why the dike is public there because the city owns the property and the dike. Mm -hmm. To the north, they own the dike but not the property. 
But that's why we have an easement across that's why, their property. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what. Okay, I've just never I'm seen just, that put in writing that that was the reason. Um, but yes, when you look at the thing, yeah. that property all the way down to 15th Street. the end. It's yeah, it's actually private before it gets to be private. That is all part of First Street Park. So it falls all under the park regulations and hours and everything. Yep, that is city property over right now. Yeah. Still gonna be interesting to solve because it's going yeah. into the yards of the residents as well. So. Yes. Can I request that if, um, as a side note, if we do have a pest control company come out to address the issue, that they do it with a non poison option because of the amount of eagles that we have in the area? Yeah, we can do that. I think going in anywhere near the waterways, they can't use any right, of that right. stuff anyways. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've been impressed. This guy's probably the best. I've networked with a lot of pest control, but he was the most responsive that I could get. Uh, everyone else is no, it's just not impressed at all. Council uh, Perry. Um, as a reminder, any um, submittals you get for the clerk position, please forward to the whole employee relations. Yep, I will, I will do that. I, I Regardless do that. if they're a dog walker or. Yep, that's, that's what I plan on doing. Uh, I got one in today. Four you four actually already have a copy of, of that one, and I had an emergency. I had to run out right after that. And, and take care of a thing today and then rush to try to get back there. But it, it's it's the person you already had before the flight. So you I, I don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have anything either. Okay. I'll, I'll send it. I just got it today. I okay. just I just got it. And then I That's fine. printed it and I had to go. I had an emergency. I had to go. So I, I will get it. I'm not holding on. Or it's the only one I've gotten so far. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Councilor Ramza. I think I've probably said enough. Okay. All, all good stuff. Um, I'd like to talk about the farming that we uh, proposed, the motion that we had. Yes. We did uh, two motions. If you'll allow me. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what? Yeah, you have to walk. There's, we need to make sure that this type of thing doesn't happen again because we don't want to set any type of precedent. So uh, and we, there was a motion that was approved on the farming. Thanks for bringing it up, Mark. Uh, and then there was a, it was brought back onto the agenda. It was kind of a surprise and it was discussed at the meeting. There wasn't really much, there wasn't really any uh, preparatory information as to why it really showed up on the agenda the second time and then there was reasoning that was presented uh, different reasoning I guess than the first one but um, it was very confusing at the time and I, I'm going to apologize in front of everybody that I didn't to make a motion to table it to find out better information but since then there's been better information found out that that was not a proper procedure to put it back on the agenda to then vote on it again. There I, was a motion, it was approved, and that is the motion that stands because council approved it. So now we actually have two motions that are both approved and they both exist. You have a $1,000 one and you have a $200 one. And to correct this, one of them needs to go away. Yes, and we, and that's interesting because the farmer declined it. He said, I'm not, I'm not paying that. Mm -hmm. And so that we offered it. Then it died. Then, then he, he said, no. Correct. And we came back with a different, no, nope. with a motion with a different amount on it. Uh huh. And then it, that was improper procedure. Okay. So one yeah, of I, wish those, I, I wish somebody would point it out because I didn't realize it. Was understood. A mistake on my part. Understood. Okay. This is a mistake on all our points because yeah. we went ahead and did it. Yeah. We're human. However, that needs to be rectified because there are two that still exist. And okay. one of them, one, to rectify it, one of them needs to be rescinded. All right. I'll, and I'll it's discuss the, it. yep. I'll discuss with an attorney and figure out what. He's right here. Yeah. The, the, the first motion, uh, uh, 
at that before the set second motion was made should have been rescinded um, and uh, and then you could take it up um, if, the, if it would require typically it requires the maker of the motion to move to rescind and the one who seconded to approve that and then a roll call vote and that the motion would be rescinded it probably would have been for the very reason that you mentioned mayor and that is uh, the, uh, the farmer uh, rejected uh, that and then you then you could have had discussion and made another motion but uh, and so you do not say did, did you just say originally that you have to get approval to rescind? You vote on that, yes. and then and if then that you, approves, yes. then you actually would make a motion to rescind. That's right. That is accurate. Okay. Yep, that is accurate. All right. Obviously, we're not going to address it tonight, but we'll. I'll well, but I'm one of the people that made one of those motions, so I would yeah. like to ask the attorney something at Go this ahead. time. If I rescinded my motion because I'm the one that made the $200 motion. Either one can be rescinded. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I could rescind mine if I have a second and yes. we would do another thing. And can we do it at this meeting though? Or we haven't closed the meeting. We can do it at any meeting. We haven't closed the meeting. Yeah, you can, you can do it at this meeting. Um, you can take uh, any action that properly comes before the, before the council. At this time, I would like to resend my motion that was made for two hundred dollars for the farmland. You would like permission to permission resend. to resend my motion. I'll second that. Well, okay. Keep in mind that I went by the second motion and I told told the farmer. Um, Sorry. And I don't know what he, how much he invested in seed or whatever. But we can't go by what you told the farmer. We have to go by proper procedure. I, I really And now we're following no, proper procedure. No, and proper procedure may be to rescind a thousand dollars. I went not out there the, and not on. one counselor showed up on that Friday morning to go over and look at that property. I'm sorry, I nobody have to work on Friday morning. Oh, I know, okay. work but the fact is nobody took me up on it. You threw this, nobody took me up on going meeting about any time. Nobody you said- You scheduled at a time no one could be there. So, how are you going to fault? I never got one response that fault us for that uh, because I put it out there at a public meeting and I got no response to say, "Can we schedule for a different?" It was <coughs> okay. That Nobody has nothing objected. to do with proper procedure. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. We're, what's going to happen is you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through this, but you're going to have to mow that field. Good and luck. it's going to cost the city a ton of money, and you're going to have to answer up. to the. Good luck mowing residents. a tilled field. I don't know anybody that can mow a tilled field. Then we're in violation of our own ordinance, as a as a city. It's we own park. all of our property. It's not a park. We. It doesn't matter. It's our property. We wrote a violation and and find a guy one hundred and fifty dollars who has an adjacent property. Trying to rectify an improper procedure. Right, and I'm saying I think the proper procedure would be to rescind a thousand dollars, not the two hundred dollars. That's your opinion. Okay. She's already made her motion. There's already been a second. Okay, and I'll I'll pull through the procedure. It has to be meeting that has to make the second. The one who oh, second the second yeah. first motion. That's fine. Yeah. Right. Well, has to be meeting. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is you second. Don made it. the motion. You yep. seconded. The sense. motion at the time it was made and then it was voted upon. So you would have to agree uh, to allow Don uh, to rescind the motion because you said it. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. No pressure. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> No pressure. I'll support procedures procedure. So you rescind a motion and then 
you know, we have to vote um, allowing the rescind. Allowing the rescind. Okay. And now, is there and now is there any discussion on it? And I will say you're going to have to answer to the residents why you're going to spend their money to mow that field because now we got to maintain it. We cannot make crack down on blight and then be in violation of our own blight ordinance as a city. We're going to have to mow it. That's the law. Isn't that our blight ordinance? We, we, give, we, we give violations to people with property right next to that one and find them for not mowing and then we're going to not mow ours. It's not going to happen. We're going to have to mow it. So I just want you to keep that in mind. I'm going to, you're going to have to answer to the residents for that. Of how you're spending your money. Rather than taking the $200, uh, which is not a lot, but it was always on the table, and, or pay to most maintain that field. We have, we have to vote on it. So let's okay. go from there instead of being I know we're in, this, we're in the yeah, discussion yeah. phase, and those are my comments for discussion. So let's take a I'll call for the vote. Let's do a roll call vote. Donnelly? Yes. Ramza? Yes. Barry? Yes. Meeting? Yes. Uh, Wakeman? Yes. Mayor Gardner? No. Motion carried. Um, now we'll go to, I think we got all the way through input. And does anybody else want to add anything? Okay. Uh, you have the residents to answer for. That's all I'll say. There's an answer to it. Uh, I think that's uncalled for. Mr. I Harris. think so. No, well. it, it's, I think it's uncalled for. I think you guys are all disrespectful out there. I, no, I, I have a right to make my comments at the end of the uh, at the meeting, and those are my comments. And I really, I, I, I'm committed to that. It's going to cost us a lot of money to mow that field. And that's just, I, I'm not going to violate our own ordinance and tell people how they should live, and we're not willing to stand up, live up to our own standard. I'm sorry if it's, I don't want to offend anybody with it. I don't like confrontation, but that's, that's what I feel. Any other comment? Everybody else is welcome to comment on that. It's just, that's my opinion. If not, we'll move on to uh, no correspondence. Receive the sent. General information, March 29th. Sorry, we've only voted to approve her, to allow her to rescind. She hasn't actually rescinded. I thought she... She asked rescind. for permission to rescind. We, I got permission so, to rescind. But you rescinded the 200 so that one doesn't stand, but the other one still stands. Sorry. $1,000. Right. Explain it, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a two-step procedure. Yeah, uh, now I have to okay. rescind my motion. Yes. Yeah. Well, I thought we just did that. Sorry. Yeah. The, no. no. The first the first one was, was to give me permission, permission to rescind, rescind my motion. Okay. Now, now she would make a motion okay. to actually rescind. Okay, thank you. At this time, I would like to rescind the motion for the farm field for the cost of, or to receive $200 for the field. And the same has to go, yes, second. Okay. We have a motion, we have support. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Um, Grandpa? Yes. Perry? Yes. Nading? Yes. Wakeman? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Mayor Garner? No. Motion carried. Uh, so I guess the $1,000 offer is on the table for John Gagne, but I'll ask him again. Uh, if he turns it down, then, um, then it's just not going to get far and we'll have to mow it. Or he could make a counter proposal and it comes back to council for consideration. Okay. All right. Um, I'll uh, call him tomorrow then. Uh, I think we went through council input. No uh, correspondence, general information, March 29th, tomorrow, uh, City Hall is closed for Good Friday. Parks and Recreation, Tuesday, April 9th at 7 p.m. at the library. 
Not at Tuesday, April 16th, Lunch Hour Park. DDA, Tuesday, April 23rd. Is that 7.30 or is that 6.30? Um, oh, that's, um, okay, 7 o'clock or is it 6? It's been 7 o'clock, but 7 we haven't meeting. decided if we're going um, okay. to have that meeting. But the, okay, it's planning. on the schedule for 7 o'clock then. Okay. Uh, planning Tuesday, April 23rd at 4 p.m. Water Tower Park, City Council, Thursday, April 11th, 7 p.m. Water Tower Park. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Support. Motion to support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. Stop it.